Hello team, welcome back. And we are starting a new training on Docker and Kubernetes. This training is going to helpful for those people who don't have the knowledge of the Docker and Kubernetes or who have the knowledge of any one of these technologies, but they also want to get the knowledge of both. In this course, we have designed the curriculum in a way first you will get the basic understanding of the tools and then you will move to the advanced level. So let's move forward and see what we are going to cover in this course and what are the things you are going to learn. So this course is aimed for the individual who are looking for the Docker and Kubernetes masterclass course. So this is going to be a very detailed course on the Docker and Kubernetes concept with a hands-on lab on the Docker and Kubernetes. The course is going to helpful for the DevOps people, DevOps automation engineers or software engineers who are basically working on the application so that application natively support the Kubernetes model. So I am Anshul Chauhan and I am going to be the instructor throughout this course. If you will get a view on the instructor's profile, then I have total 21 plus courses available on the Udemy and as of now total 230,000 people are learning from our courses. The instructor rating is also good. We have 18,000 plus reviews on this profile and overall rating is 4.6 plus, which is definitely a good one. So this course is going to be a perfect place for the people who want to go with the Docker and Kubernetes specialization or who want to start with the Docker and Kubernetes. To start with this course, you don't need any prior knowledge of the Docker or Kubernetes. We will start from very scratch and we will show you the path of the advanced levels. There is another important aspect that what is the things we are going to learn as a part of this course. So let me explain. Very first, we will start with the Docker part because to understand the Kubernetes, which is a complex thing, first you must have the knowledge of the docker so we will start with the docker we will see the docker requirement docker installation we will go with the docker basics where we will create the container at a runtime we will execute the container with a different different way then we will go with the docker images which is a deployable images in the docker where we will see how you can create the image of your software application how you will execute your application within the docker environment then we will go through the docker networking where we will understand the different different networking expect that how you can access your application how the external parties can access your application how you can expose your application on the host machine and how you can expose your application on the dns then we will go with the docker volumes where we will learn about the stateless and stateful containers we will learn that how you can manage the stateful application the application like the database or any application who is basically executing on the persistent data how you can manage these applications using the docker then we will go with the multi container and first we will go with the multi container on the local setup it means developer machine so we will use the docker compose then we will go with the docker orchestration that how you can execute the multiple container in the docker and as a combine you will produce a single application to the end user for the docker orchestration we will learn about the docker swarm which is a native orchestration tool available for the docker and then we will see that what are the differences between the swarm and kts which means swarm and kubernetes so this is the part these are the things which we are going to cover as a part of the docker and over here we are just getting the headlines of the sections what we are going to cover but while you will start learning you will see that we will cover these things in very deep right so we will get the in-depth knowledge of the Docker, Docker Swarm, Docker Compose, Docker Orchestration, multi-container applications and the stateful and stateless application in the Docker. Once we will go through all these things, we will go with the advanced part, the Kubernetes, which is a bit complex compared to the Docker because Kubernetes is an orchestration application for the Docker, right? So if you want to learn the Kubernetes, you must have the prior knowledge of the Docker so that we have included all the Docker part in a first and moved the Kubernetes into the second half. In the Kubernetes, we will see that what is the requirement of the Kubernetes, what are the purpose Kubernetes is fulfilling in the market, how we can install the Kubernetes, there are multiple ways. So we will learn about the self-managed service and we will also learn about the cloud managed services in the Kubernetes like GKE, EKS and Azure Kubernetes. Then we will learn then we will go through with the Kubernetes basic that what are the terminology of the Kubernetes, how Kubernetes is actually working, what is the infrastructure of the Kubernetes, what is the architecture of the Kubernetes. There are going to be a lot of things which we are going to cover. 
then we will see how we can manage the Kubernetes cluster. If you are installing your Kubernetes cluster, that is a single node cluster or multi node cluster, how you can manage your Kubernetes cluster, how you can become the administrator of your Kubernetes cluster. We will see the Kubernetes advanced part where we will see the multiple things which you can achieve using the Kubernetes, but it is a very hard to achieve in the Docker. Then we will see how you can do the deployments in the Kubernetes. There are multiple ways and we will see all of them. We will also learn about the Kubernetes networking, which is definitely an important part. We will see the Kubernetes services and storage. Here Kubernetes services means the Kubernetes object which you will deploy for your application access. We will go through these things in very details. Then we will see the load balancing in the Kubernetes, how Kubernetes perform the load balancing and what types of load balancing available in the Kubernetes and how you can opt out the correct load balancing for your application. We will go with the self-managed service in the Kubernetes, the Helm package manager in the Kubernetes using the Helm you can bundle and deploy your application in the Kubernetes cluster. So these are the other things or the second part which we are going to cover for the Kubernetes. So this is the complete structure we have seen that what are the things you will learn in the Docker and what are the things you will learn in the Kubernetes. This training is a complete course or you can say the master class course for the Docker and Kubernetes and the people who are interested in the Docker and Kubernetes technologies, they can enroll this course. Few of the learner may have the question that at what level I will stand out after this course. So let me tell you that these are the things which you will do after the completion of this course. You will be able to understand, deploy, use and manage the Docker containers. There is no need to search and Google out the things that how we can manage, use, deploy the containers. You will be able to understand, deploy the containers on the production using the Docker Swarm. So the container orchestration that how we can deploy the containers, how the application will behave with the multiple containers. You will be able to deploy the things in the production using the Docker Swarm. If you are using the Docker Swarm, then you will be able to deploy. You will be able to use the Kubernetes on the production containerized application that how Kubernetes can be used to orchestrate the containerized application in the production. You will get the complete understanding and you would be able to do so after the completion of this course. You will be able to run the stateless and stateful application on the Kubernetes because there is a specific nature of the stateless application and the stateful application and this is a bit complex part while we are executing the application in the environment like the Kubernetes or the Docker. So you would be able to run the stateless and the stateful both kind of application on the Kubernetes. You will be able to manage the production application on the Kubernetes because in the production there could be the multiple things like the security, networking, load balancing. So you will get the complete knowledge of the Kubernetes so that you will be able to completely manage your production application on the Kubernetes. You will be also able to administer your production K8 cluster. So if you are using the managed service where the Kubernetes as a service provided by the different different cloud providers, then the administrator part is the cloud providers job, right? Still you need to do some kind of maintenance, but most of the things will be done by the cloud provider. But if you are using the on-prem installation of the Kubernetes where you are installing the Kubernetes and you are creating your own cluster for the production deployment, then you will be able to administer the complete production Kubernetes cluster. You will be able to understand what are the terminologies and how we can manage these things as a Kubernetes administrator. In the last, we will cover up the Helm package manager. Using the Helm package manager, you will be able to package your application and execute your application on the Kubernetes using few single commands. So these are the things which you will be able to do after the completion of this course. So as this is going to be online course, you may face some kind of problem in the lecture. If you are getting any problem in any lecture, you can raise your question in the question and answer forum. Each lecture have the associated question and answer forum. So you can put your question over there and we will reply as best as possible. Once you will complete this course, you will get the digital soft copy, the certification copy of this course and Udemy will issue the certification for this course. So you can put that certification on your LinkedIn and LinkedIn certification section. There is another big and major concern that what about the course material and the code files. So as a part of this course, we will develop the multiple code files, configuration files, text files, JSON, YAML files. So how you will get these files, right? So you don't need to write any kind of file from scratch. If you want, you can do it because practice makes the things better, right? But 
if you want to get some kind of help that what are the file we are using whatever the code we are using so we will basically check out the complete code in the public github repository and i will provide you the locations of the github repository you can easily go to the github repository download the code so that you will have all the code whatever the code files we are going to use as a part of this course so this is the complete picture of the course i hope you are able to understand that what we are going to cover all i can say that this is going to be a perfect course for you if you are learning about the docker and kubernetes good luck happy learning see you in the coming lecture hello team and welcome back today we will discuss what is docker and why docker what are those things which is making the docker so much popular and why companies are adopting the docker over the traditional vm based solutions so in a nutshell if i will mention then docker is the future of software management you will see that docker has done the revolutionary changes in the software development or software management because there are multiple things using which docker has minimized the operational cost and maximized the application availability so what are those things docker is a hotter than hot because it makes it possible to get more and more app running on the same old server and additionally it also make it very easy to package and ship the program so that is the complete life cycle of the software application you build the package you ship the package and you execute the package and along with the easiness it is more product friendly that if you was executing a single application on a single vm after the docker you may execute the 20 or 30 instances of the same application on the same vm shortly we will see that what we are talking about but right now you can assume that using the docker you can execute more and more app on the same vm where earlier the only single app was running on that vm and docker make the software build package ship and execution very easy docker came in 2014 and after that a lot of products come from the docker but there are three innovations which makes the docker the futuristic tool and these are the docker image docker container registry and docker container docker image is a bundle package of the executable code docker container registry is a registry where you can ship that particular executable code and docker container is that executable code which is actually executing so these are the three innovations which docker done image which is a package or build or bundle of the code docker container registry where you can put the bundle or your execution code there are multiple container registry available but the common container registry is the docker hub and then the container itself which is a executable instance of that code i mean to say the executable instance of the docker image so what is the docker development backbone if you will go to the traditional software development then you will see that what is the software development software development is build ship and run in the build you are building your artifacts in the ship you are shipping this artifact to the production or to some other vm machines and in the run you are basically executing this artifact on the vm or on the production same thing is being done with the docker but in more easy way once we are saying the software build in terms of the docker that is a docker image which is a executable bundle or bundle of your software code once we are saying to ship where you are shipping your artifact in terms of the docker you are shipping your artifact your docker image on the docker registry and once we are saying that on a vm based solutions you are executing your application here in the container you are executing your container and your container is a running instance of your application let's understand why companies embrace the docker containers and there are multiple reasons why companies are embracing the docker containers what i would like to mention a very few and you will understand that why the companies are embracing the docker containers the very first is use of shared operating system earlier before the docker what is the model of the application execution you need to create a virtual machine or you need to create a machine and on that machine you will execute the single instance of your application but with the docker this is not the case you can execute n number of docker container on a same 
machine on same operating system and each container will be a separate instance of your application. Earlier where only one instance was executing on one machine, after the docker you can execute the n number of instance of the same application on the same machine which is providing two features. First, it is very, very cost effective. Second, you are getting the high availability application in minimal cost. Second is continuous integration, delivery and deployment. The same thing, build, ship and run. Developers are basically developing their code. They are creating the artifact in terms of the Docker image. They are delivering this artifact to the Docker registry and they are doing the deployment they are creating the containers right so the docker containers are making the ci cd the devops part is very easy because over here you are basically doing the integrations continuously you are delivering that uh, images continuously and then you are doing the deployment on the same way so in nutshell the docker enables developer to easily pick ship and run any application as a lightweight portable self sufficient container which is a executable instance of a application and last is easy to deploy in cloud all public cloud providers are natively providing the support of docker and docker orchestration right even almost all public cloud providers have their native container registry as well so these are few things which are making the docker the futuristic tool and i hope you got the point that why docker is so much important and why Docker is the default choice of the IT companies in these days. One more thing, whatever the operations you want to perform on the Docker, either you can perform from the CLI, the command line, or Docker have the software development kit available in the different different programming languages like Python, Java, you can use them. So thank you team, see you next time. Hello team, welcome back. And today we will discuss why Docker and why Docker matters for the developers. So there are the multiple reasons that why we are using Docker and we are going to discuss few of those. So very first, let me try to explain why Docker matters for the developers. So this is a very famous statement and I believe either you have heard it in your career or you have already said it to someone else in your career, but it was running on my machine. So generally the software developers use this line while the application breaks on someone else machine either their friend's machine or the software tester machine and i believe every developer has said this in his life while shipping the app to friends or the testers machine so does it mean the developer is developing the application to execute on their machine no developer is developing the application so that he can build it ship it and execute it on the production environment so what are those reasons why the application is mostly work on the developer's machine and it fails on the tester machine or it fails on the production or it fails on the someone else machine. So Docker is the answer and Docker helps developer to solve these problems and provide a system independent runtime environment for the application. Yes, that is a very true statement. Docker provides a system or OS independent runtime environment for the execution of the applications. And that is the thing which makes the Docker so much popular. So we are going to discuss a few reasons that why the IT industries are adopting the Docker and why Docker becomes so much popular in very short time. So the first reason the Docker becomes so much popular is environment isolation. So as a developer, it was a really tough task to configure the application for the different different version of a software on a single machine. Now you can create the isolated environment called the Docker container with the help of the Docker and each container may have the different different version of your application like in this diagram we can see we have a single host machine this is a one operating system on this operating system basically we are executing the docker runtime environment this is the docker runtime environment and on this docker runtime environment we can execute n number of container you can see we are executing almost six container on a same machine and each container either a different version of the application Either they could be the same version of the same application or either they could be the different different application. This was not happening before. On a single machine, you can only and only execute a single application. But with the help of the Docker, you can execute multiple applications or multiple version of a same application or multiple instances of the same application and same version. And the conclusion is 
यू कैन एग्जीक्यूट द मल्टीपल इंस्टांसेज और मल्टीपल एप्लीकेशन ऑन द सिंगल ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम और सिंगल मशीन दिस वॉज नॉट हैपनिंग बिफोर इधर यू कैन अचीव शॉर्ट ऑफ इट यूजिंग द वर्चुअल मशीन बट दैट हैज ए डिफरेंट ड्रॉबैक्स बिकॉज इन द वर्चुअल मशीन यू नीड टू रिजर्व द नंबर ऑफ सी पी यूज यू नीड टू रिजर्व द कंप्यूटर रिसोर्सेज विद द डॉकर यू डोंट नीड टू रिजर्व द रिसोर्सेज शॉर्टली इन द कमिंग लेक्चर्स वी विल ऑल्सो सी दैट वाई वी डोंट नीड टू रिजर्व द रिसोर्सेज विद द डॉकर बिकॉज वंस यू विल एग्जीक्यूट द डॉकर कंटेनर ऑन योर मशीन इट विल डिमांड द रिसोर्सेज एट रन टाइम in the coming lectures we will also discuss that if you want to launch a docker with the static resource with some kind of cpu and some kind of ram how we can do it but the basic nature of the docker is not reserve the resources on the system it will demand the resources from the system at run time on basis of the application use so the first and biggest reason is environment isolation docker provide the isolated environment for each application or you can say for each instance or you can say for each container because docker create the instance of your application or you can say the run time instance of your application in a container which is a separate and isolated unit the second reason is os independent application yes that is true using docker you can make your app platform independent and running a docker container on linux mac os windows or any operating system because docker is not executing on the host machine operating system no while you will execute the container that container will have its own operating system we will see and i will show you that how you can use the different different operating system in a different different docker containers and you can execute all these containers on a single machine and it doesn't matter that the host machine on which you are executing the multiple docker containers that machine is a linux machine windows machine or a mac operating system machine so in this diagram you can see this is a one container this is a second container and this is a third container and these container are basically not interacting with the operating system no they are interacting with the docker runtime environment kernel and that docker runtime environment kernel is basically interacting with the operating system so these containers may have the different different operating system you can see over here we have a three containers and all three containers are using the different operating system debian base ubuntu base and alpine so first thing the docker application is the os independent and you can execute the multiple operating system the different different operating system on a same host machine in the docker with the help of the docker you can achieve the rapid deployment and the development docker efficiently organize the entire development life cycle by providing the standard working environment to the developers so developer need to know that how they can create the docker container the individual docker container for a independent process and the one more advantage is that docker app do not boot with the operating system if your operating system is booting then the docker app will not boot with your operating system so it will also save a lot of time so the docker containers come up with a minimal run time requirement of the application that allow them for the deploy faster right so docker provides the rapid development and the deployment another reason is scalability and flexibility which made the docker more easy so let's suppose you are not using the docker and you are executing your application on a stand alone machine so here are few machine which are executing your application instances over here these are three machines which are executing the three instances of your application and you can see now in a days the application is getting the traffic on event basis so let me take an example suppose you are working for some e-commerce product and that product are getting the traffic on a basis of the deals it may get the traffic on the basis of the sales it may get the traffic on a basis of event like a like a cricket match a football match or it may get the traffic on a a uh, new movie release so there could be the n number of possibilities where the application may get the traffic rapidly in that case if you are not using the docker what you need to do if these three machines are not able to take care of your environment what you need to do you need to spin up the new machines and spin up the new machine from a scratch is definitely a big task this is not a easy task so let's suppose you are using the docker what docker can do there could be the n number of machine let's take an example there are two machines and in these two machines there could be the n number of dockers right so let's suppose initially these dockers are executing or these containers are executing on your 
host machine. Suddenly you got the traffic. So you can configure the Docker in a way that whenever we are getting a more traffic, Docker will be able to launch more containers. So once the traffic will increase, Docker itself will increase the number of containers and it will try to serve the traffic, right? Docker will itself increase the number of containers. You don't need to increase the number of container at a runtime. And because Docker is executing the lightweight process and the runtime is very minimum, so you can scale your application very rapidly. So this is the another feature which comes up with the Docker and which is a very useful feature. Next is no more security issues. With the Docker, you have the less security issues. Why? Because Docker container are more secure than the ordinary app. Even in the container, you cannot access the data from the other containers without having the authorized access. That is not possible that the container can interact with each other. They can access the data of each other or they can access the state of each other if they don't have the authorized access. Also, you can add the multiple security layers if you want in the Docker to ensure the security. So Docker is more secure as compared to the ordinary applications. The next reason is the ship anytime and anywhere. The application migration or the shipment has always been considered as a very long task, which is not only requires the human resources, but also consumes a lot of time in configuration and setup. But Docker is a game changer here. It allows you to freely ship your application anywhere, anytime without your worries. And all you need to do, you just need to publish your image on the registry and you have the Docker runtime environment at the support system or the machine where you are exposing or the machine where you are expecting to execute your Docker containers. So what you need to do, you just need to install the Docker runtime environment and the artifact of your Docker, the artifact of your product should be available on the registry. Docker will automatically fetch that artifact and execute your application instance on the machine where the Docker is installed. That is way easy compared to the earlier shipment where you need to ship your application on the other machines. You need to create the machine, you need to configure the application, you need to configure the hardware and then application will come up. The another reason is dependency management made easy. Because in the Docker, while you are creating the Docker image, which is a application code, then with the application code, you also need to mention all the dependencies, the dependencies which your application need to execute. So that is a bundle and ship kind of thing. Bundle all the things in a single packet and ship that. And once the Docker will execute it, all the dependencies should be already configured in the image. You don't need to download the dependencies at runtime, right? So it make the dependency more easier. And the another one is inbuilt version control system. Docker images also follow the versioning, right? Whenever you are going to push the new images and incremental images of a same product, Docker will itself version the images. You don't need to explicitly do the versioning. If you want, you can do, but Docker will itself version the images. So you can see these are the major factors or you can say the major reasons which are making the Docker more convenient for the developers and the IT companies to execute their application for the production. So these are the few reasons why you should go with the Docker. From the coming lectures, we will start learning about the Docker in depth and we will go with the installation and all. Thank you team. See you next time. Hello team. Welcome back. And now we have a little knowledge of the Docker that what is Docker and what is the related context of the Docker. We will move further and we will see the installation. So this particular section is all about the installation because Docker provides the multiple type of installation. So we will see that what is the right installation for you and how you can do the Docker installation. So very first, whenever you are going to start the Docker, the first question is which Docker you will be using. There are multiple flavors available with the Docker and we need to decide that which is the suitable Docker for us. So majorly there are two things which you need to consider while you are installing the Docker and the first is Docker desktop. A Docker desktop is a complete end to end application for the Docker environment on desktop machine for the developers. So as I mentioned the desktop machine, I mean to say that the Docker desktop is only suitable for the local installation. I mean to say the desktop installation. If you want to provide the Docker installation on the server, then there is another kind of installation which is a docker engine. Docker engine is a docker addition for the server side installation which will be preferred for the servers and the cloud machines. It is only compatible with the Linux. 
so for the local installation you need to install the docker desktop and for the servers for the server machine or the cloud machine you need to go with the docker engine as i mentioned the docker engine is only compatible with the linux machine but you will get the multiple flavors of the docker desktop you can install the docker desktop on the ubuntu desktop on windows and on mac operating system as well docker desktop provides a very simple interface that enable user to manage the containers application and images directly from the local machine so because docker is a very famous tool so you need something which can support the developers to develop the application over the docker which is a complete end to end environment for the docker application to develop the docker on your local machine but whenever you want to execute the docker on the server side you need to use the docker engine let's see what is the docker environment includes in itself or what is the docker desktop includes in itself so docker desktop include the docker engine so basically the docker engine is the core engine which will execute the docker or you may call it docker runtime environment apart from the docker engine the docker desktop have the docker cli client docker cli client is a command line interface which you can use to interact with the docker then we have the docker buildx docker buildx is used to build the docker images then we have the docker compose which is a development oriented tool for the multi container setup then we have the docker content trust docker content trust is used to basically authorize the data which docker is requesting or you are requesting for the docker so it will manage the docker certificates and the keys then we have the kubernetes if you are not aware with the kubernetes then kubernetes is a docker orchestration system where you can orchestrate your application which is using the docker then we have the credential helper which will help us to store the credential or build the credential locally so these all are the component of the docker desktop that's why i mentioned that docker desktop is a end to end solution for the docker application development now let's go through some key features of the docker desktop so docker desktop have the many features so using the docker desktop you are getting the ability to containerize any application and share it over the cloud you are getting a very easy installation and setup of the complete docker development environment apart from this you are getting apart from this you are getting the kubernetes integrated environment with the docker to execute your docker on the kubernetes environment and if you are using the windows then you can toggle between the linux and windows environment to develop your application and docker desktop is using the windows wsl2 which is a native linux compatibility on the windows developed by the microsoft right so you are getting the ability to work natively on the linux through the wsl2 on the windows machine volume mounting for the code of data including the file changes notification and and the container volume or the local host network these all are the features which comes with the docker desktop so docker desktop is a complete end to end docker development kit so using the docker desktop you can develop the containerized application end to end on your machine in the coming lecture we will see the installation of the docker desktop and what kind of installation is available for the docker desktop so thank you team see you in the coming lecture hello team welcome back now we have the idea what is docker desktop and what is docker engine so very first we will see that what is the installation process of the docker desktop and in this lecture we will also see how we can install the docker desktop for the mac machine and to go through the installation of the docker desktop we need to open the browser and open the docker official site so here we are on the browser and i will type for the docker you will get the official site of the docker www.docker.com let's go to this site and very first on the top of the site we are getting develop faster run anywhere download docker desktop and the docker desktop is available for the apple windows and linux let's go to the pricing and if you will go to the pricing then you can see there are few plans personal pro team and business personal plan is ideal for the individual developers education open source communities and small business so to start using the docker desktop you don't need to pay any money this is officially free of cost for the developers and education as we are learning the docker so we can use the personal plan 
if you will click on the start now you will see you are getting a page of create docker account we will come to this later very first we will see the installation of the docker desktop so let's go to the home page and here you can see the download docker desktop is available for the mac operating system intel chip mac operating system apple chip windows and linux so once you will click this link if you will click over here it will start to download the dmg file this will also start to download the dmg file this will start to download the exe file and this will start to download the zip file go to the new tab and type docker desktop you will get the link of the docs.docker.com install docker desktop let's open this link this installation is for the windows operating system over here you can see we have the parent install docker desktop and we are getting the installation guide for the install on mac install on windows and install on linux so if you are using the linux operating system you need to follow these instructions whatever the instructions are given over here if you are using the windows operating system then you need to follow these instructions whatever the instructions are given over here and if you are using the mac operating system you need to execute these steps so for the mac operating system there is two kind of installation is available one for the intel chip and another one for the apple silicon chip so you need to be make sure that what is your mac operating system chip type if it is intel you need to download this version if it is apple silicon then you need to download this version let me verify what is the chip for my machine i will click this apple icon go to the about this mac and you can say the processor i'm using is the 1.8 gigahertz 12 tone intel core i5 so i will definitely go with the intel chip so i will click it this will download the dmg file the size is 556 megabyte let's wait until the complete download will be done the file download is done now if you will go to the install docker step on the mac it is saying double click the dmg file to open the installer and drag the docker icon to the application folder so i will double click it it is opening the dmg file let's wait until the verification will be done so once the installation will be done you will get a window like this what you need to do you need to drag this and release it over here within the application once you will drag it and release in the application in your applications you will get the docker icon and it is here you can see the installation isn't done or this transfer is in progress we have to wait until the progress will be done you can see the transfer or the installation is done now the docker icon is available within my application what is the next course of action next is double click the docker app in the applications folder to start the docker so what i need to do i need to double click this icon to start the docker so i will double click this icon and wait for the docker to start up it may possible it will ask you that docker is trying to install a new helper tool and it will ask your password you need to provide your password and click on the install helper now you need to accept this agreement and you will get a message docker desktop is starting let's wait until the docker desktop will be started now once it will done it will ask you to get started with the docker in few easy steps estimated time is two minute click on the start now it is saying that getting started project is a simple with github so we need to clone the repository i will simply click this icon to do this you can see it is downloading some image and it will start a temporary container on my machine see this is done now go to the next step it is saying that go to this getting started the repository which is being downloaded from the git and execute this command i will click this arrow so what it will do it will go to the docker started and basically creating a image right don't worry i will explain each and everything whatever the thing we are doing over here or whatever the things are happening in the background i will explain each and everything shortly right now just go with the installation whatever the installation docker is saying to execute so if you want to relate i can show you that right now it is basically creating the image right it is basically creating the image of your source code 
and then it will push that image to the docker registry it is done go to the next step now it is saying run this command docker run hyphen d hyphen p port 8080 name docker tutorial and this is the name let's execute this command and you can see the container is being started with this particular id click on next it is saying now save and share your image it's done right so we will go to the dashboard over here if you will go to the images you can see the new image is being created docker 101 tutorial this is the image which we just created right if you will go to the containers you can see a container is running name is docker tutorial so this is the container we just started so this is the very simple interface what you will get in the docker if you want to delete it simply click on delete forever if you want to delete the alpine as well click on delete forever in the image if you want to delete this image delete it remove the image delete forever remove this image delete forever so this is the way how you can work with the docker desktop once you will done this installation if you will go to your menu you see you are getting this icon over here this docker icon is called mobi and over here if you will click this you are getting a lot of options over here right the extension kubernetes pause restart and quite docker desktop so there are few things which you can get over here on the same way if you will install the docker on the windows you will get the icon you will get this particular icon in your windows machine and you will get the similar kind of ui on the windows if you will install the docker desktop on the linux you will get the similar ui so the docker desktop ui is going to be the same irrespective of you are using the docker desktop on the windows linux or mac right so the docker desktop ui experience is going to be the same that is not going to be the different the installation process may be different depend to os to os right and for the installation you will get the complete help from the official documentation for the windows you need to download the exe right after the exe download you need to follow this whatever the commands mentioned over here you need to follow these so team this is the way how we can install the docker desktop right if you have any doubt any question you can ask me thank you team see you next time hello team welcome back and we have seen that how we can install the docker desktop on the local machine but we also need to understand that how we should install the docker engine because docker desktop will work for your local machine but for the server side installation you need the docker engine and i must believe that every learner who is on this course are not the developers they are the devops engineer as well right and if you are a devops engineer or you are a developer where you need to support the production as well then you should know that how to work with the docker engine on the server side for the development it is okay to have the docker desktop but for the server side execution you need the docker engine so as a part of this lecture we will discuss about it that how we can install the docker engine what is the system requirement do you have for the docker engine so for the installation of the docker desktop you just need your desktop machine you can install the docker desktop either for windows linux or mac and you can install it using the given instructions and we have seen that how we can install it on the mac and we was good to use it but if you need to install the docker engine on the server side where you are executing your application on the production that how you should install the docker engine what is the system requirement do you need so very first requirement is the docker engine installation only requires the linux or ubuntu based servers you cannot install the docker engine on the windows machine no docker engine only support natively the linux and ubuntu servers and this is a library so you need to install the docker engine library on the linux or windows servers once you have the windows and ubuntu based servers if you are using the linux or you are using the mac operating system then you can easily connect with the server using the ssh right you can ssh the server from your terminal linux terminal or the mac terminal but if you are using the windows operating system then you cannot ssh your server and to ssh your server to make the ssh connection with your server by which you can connect with the server cli 
you need to some kind of SSH tool like putty or MOBA extern to, to connect with your server. So if you will go to the browser. So these tools are only required if you are using the windows, right? And you want to connect with your server. So you see, if you will search for the putty, then you can see, you can download the putty. And what is the definition? Putty is a SSH and Telnet client. You can download it and you can use it. Otherwise, I will prefer, this is a very nice tool to connect with the servers or make the SSH connection. And you will get a UI like this, which is a very interactive UI. So you can install either of the tool Putty or Mobax term if you are using the Windows operating system and you want to connect with your servers. Here to create the Linux server, you can use the any cloud provider. If you have your account with the Microsoft Azure, GCP or AWS, you can use your preferred cloud. But we will be using the Digital Ocean Cloud. Right, we will be using the Digital Ocean Cloud. And what is the reason that I'm using it? Because to use the Digital Ocean Cloud, you need a very little knowledge of the cloud technologies, right? You just spin up a server and you can connect with it and you can do whatever you want. You don't need to care about the network, security rules, security groups, IAM rules. And there's a lot of things which comes in a picture once we are going with the AWS, Azure or the GCP. So we will simply use the Digital Ocean, which is the simplest public cloud. And we will create a server on the Digital Ocean because this is a paid cloud provider. So what I will do, I will provide you a $200 Digital Ocean coupon. Using that coupon, you can create the machine and you can use the Digital Ocean for 60 days. Right. How you can get the coupon? So in the next lecture, I have prepared the instructions. You need to follow these instructions. If I will open the next lecture, you can see the instruction will look like this. So you will get this next lecture, 200 credit for the Digital Ocean to create the Linux server. Over here, I have provided the promo link to get the $200 credit. Once you will click this link, this link will redirect you on the Digital Ocean Cloud. And over here, you are getting a message, free credit active, get started on the Digital Ocean with $200 60 day credit for the new users. You just need to sign up and create a new account. And these $200 credit will be credited in your newly created Digital Ocean account. Later in the coming lecture, we will see how we can create the machine with the Digital Ocean. As a part of this lecture, what you need to do, you need to sign up and create an account on the Digital Ocean. Thank you team. See you next time. Hello team, welcome back. And as we discussed in the previous lecture that we need a server to install the Docker engine. If you are using the GCP, AWS or Microsoft Azure or some other cloud, then you can go and create a server on your public cloud. If you are going to use the Digital Ocean, then we will see that how we can create the Linux server on the Digital Ocean. In the last lecture, I have already provided the $200 credit code. So I believe every one of you have created the account with the Digital Ocean to avail that $200 credit. So let's go to the Digital Ocean and see how we can create the server. So open the browser and search for the Digital Ocean and you will get the Digital Ocean official link www.digitalocean.com. Let's click this. You have created the account. So click on the login button and log in your account. So once you will open the Digital Ocean, you will get a UI like this. Over here on the top of it, you are getting a create option. I will click it. And over here, you are getting a droplet create cloud server. I will click this link. Once you will click this link, you need to choose the data center for your server. I will go with the default data center. No need to change in the network. I will go with the default network. Choose the machine type. You can choose any machine type, whatever you want. I'm going with the Ubuntu. Choose the version. So latest version is available Ubuntu 20.10. I will go with the latest one. Over here, you are getting the droplet type. If you want, you can use the shared CPU or you can use the general purpose CPU, but shared CPU is a cheaper compared to the general purpose CPU or any other CPUs. So we will go with the shared CPU and we will go with the regular SSD. See here we are getting the different different machines. Like if we will go with the $12 machine, then we will get the 2 GB RAM and 1 core CPU, 50 GB SSD. If we will go with this, we will get the 2 GB and 2 core CPU because we have the $200 credit in our account. So we can go with any of the machine. Let's suppose we are going with the $18 per month machine or $24 per month machine. Let's select this. Here it is asking to authenticate. If you want to authenticate your machine with the SSH key, you can use it. 
otherwise i will choose the password based authentication over here as per the password instructions or password requirement you need to type your password i have typed my password from this icon you can also see that what is the password you have typed you need to remember this password because this password you need to use to ssh this droplet once it will be created now here few more options let me avoid all these here we are getting that how many servers we are going to create we are just going to create one machine and let's rename the host name i will take it docker machine right let's click on the droplet shortly your machine will be ready let's wait so the droplet is ready and over here we are getting the ip you can use this ip to ssh your machine if you want to ssh using the ip you can use it otherwise digital ocean provide the browser based access as well let's click this three dots over here and you can see we are getting the option access console open this access console and over here it is asking login as root launch droplet console click on it what it will do it will open the cli of your server in your browser so you will be able to access your machine from your browser you don't need any ssh tool or you don't need to use the ssh from your linux terminal or the mac operating system terminal you can directly access your machine from your browser let's wait until the console will be ready so you can see the console is ready we are getting the machine information this is the name of my machine and this is the ip of my machine this is the ip of my local machine from which i am accessing this droplet so this is the way team how you can create so team this is the way how you can create the digital ocean machine and how you can access the digital ocean machine over the browser if you want to access this machine over the ssh client you can use the ssh tools but i prefer to use the browser because over here i don't need to type the passwords again and again hello team welcome back and in the previous lecture we have seen that how we can create the server right so if you are using the digital ocean you can follow the instruction which we have used in the previous lecture and create the server if you are using some other cloud then you can create your server and follow the instructions which we are going to do today to install the docker engine on the linux server so today we will see how we can install the docker engine on the linux server or the ubuntu server so we will go to the digital ocean machine which we created in the earlier lecture so here we are on the docker machine right this is the machine we created in the digital ocean in the previous lecture i will clear out the console but we also need to know that what is the steps we need to follow to install the docker engine on the linux server so we will go and open the docs.docker.com this is the official docker document site over here we are getting the option to download and install if you will click this in a new tab here you will get the option to install the desktop only you are not getting any option to install the docker engine to install the docker engine we need to go to the manuals and in the manuals you are getting a link docker engine let's click on the docker engine over here you are getting the install go to the install and in the install you can see we are getting the different different kind of installation install for centos debian fedora rhel sles and ubuntu we created the ubuntu based machine so we will go to the install on ubuntu here you can see this is the prerequisite of your operating system it needs ubuntu 22.04 what is the ubuntu version we installed we installed ubuntu 22.10 it means the operating system which we used is not compatible with the docker engine right so we need to recreate the docker machine so what i need to do very first i need to destroy my docker machine so click on destroy destroy this droplet and i will create a new droplet with the compatible operating system we are already aware with the steps so i don't need to explain each and everything again and again I will just choose the Ubuntu 22.04 long time support version fill out my other details and click on the create so you can see the machine is ready we will access this machine on the console so we will again click this option access console and launch the droplet in a console so this is the correct os version we have installed which is Ubuntu 22.04 long time support let's wait until we will get the connection with the machine so the server is connected you can see this is my 22.041 lts 
long term support of ubuntu linux 5.15 this is the ip of my server i will clear out the console let me maximize the font so that so that we can see the commands clearly now let's go back to the documentation in the documentation it is asking to install the old version because we created the server very first time so there is no old version available so we will skip this command scroll down now it is saying first we need to update the apt package directory so we will copy this command and execute over here to update the apt get package directory apt get is a package manager in the linux this is done now we will go to the next command and over here you can see it is installing few package ca certificate curl gnu pg and lsp release so i will copy this as it is clear out my console and put this command hit enter and it will install all four packages whenever it will ask you need to provide your confirmation by provide by hit enter and the installation is done clear out the console and the next step it is saying add docker official jpg key so i will copy these commands and execute here hit enter this is done next it is saying use the following command to set up the repository i will copy this put it here hit enter this is also done after this it is saying install the docker engine it is again asking to update the package manager why it is asking to update the package manager because we have done some changes in the repository and the jpg key so once you will update the package manager it will download the package which you have updated in your registry or directory this is done now copy these commands and execute these two and after then it is saying install the docker engine container d and the docker compose and this is the command to go with the latest one if you want to choose any specific version you can use this i'm go with the latest one copy this put it here so it is installing the few things first it will install the docker ce which is docker community edition then it will install the docker ce cli community edition command line interface container d.io which is a container daemon process and docker compose plugin which is a docker compose for the multi container environment hit enter it will ask for your confirmation provide your confirmation and hit enter it will take some time and shortly you will see the docker installation will be done see this is done clear out the console now to verify your installation you can execute the docker run hello world what this will do this will basically execute the hello world container on your docker environment so i will execute it it will basically download the image and it will execute the container the container execution is done this is the id of your container and this is the message which your container being printed hello from docker if you want to see you can clear out the console and execute a command docker ps hyphen a this will list out all the containers either in the running state or in the exited state on your machine so see this is a container which is exited 30 second ago the image name was hello world and the container name was solic hover so the installation is done if you want to verify the version of your docker you can install docker version hit enter and docker version 20.10.21 is installed right so team this is the way how we can install the docker desktop how we can install the docker for the servers so we have done the both kind of installation going forward in this course we will use the server side installation as well and the local installation as well i mean to say the docker desktop and docker engine both why if you want you can use any one either you can use the docker desktop completely or you can use the docker engine completely right but i want to use the mix of these so that i can show you that if you want to work with the servers what are the docker commands you need to use and if you want to work with the desktop as a developer then what is the commands you need to use so the command is going to be the same but at least you will get some practice that how you can work with the server and how you can work with the docker desktop so that's we are going to use both of the flavors thank you team in the coming lecture we will 
start learning the docker basics thank you hello team welcome back previously we have discussed how we can do the installation and we have done the setup of the docker desktop and docker on the linux server now we will start with the docker right we will start with the docker functionality first we will check the installation then we will check the configuration and we will start learning about few commands in the docker so as of now we are not going to use the docker desktop we will use the docker on the server so we created the digital ocean server and we installed the docker on it so we will use that particular server machine for the few next lectures once there is something which i need to show you on the docker desktop i will show you on the docker desktop but for now we are going to use the server so what we will cover as a beginner as of now we are beginner in the docker because we don't have seen the docker right I'm not sure if you have some experience in the docker but I'm assuming that the people who are learning this course they are beginners so what we will cover as a beginner very first we will see we we'll learn about the containers what are the containers how we can initiate the container on the docker we will check out the versions of the docker and the docker CLI and then we will learn about the container management command so to execute the stuff on the docker you need to use the docker CLI so you need to be very specific about the commands the command should be on your tips and these are the command which you will be using while you will be working with the docker so let's start with this so very first we will verify the version of the docker installed on our machine so as i told you we will use the server side machine so team here i have opened my server side machine docker machine where we installed the docker so let's check the version of a docker using a command docker version hit enter once you will execute this command you will get a two kind of output very first we are getting the output of the client right second we are getting output of the server so what is this client and what is this server so you can see this is the client of the docker engine community and this is the server of the docker engine community so client is docker client so if you remember while we was installing the docker we have installed the docker c docker cli docker container d and there was few more libraries so this docker client is a docker cli the command line interface which will interact with the docker engine and this server is a docker runtime environment right which is actually executing the docker so this cli docker used to communicate with the docker server and this server is the actual docker server which is executing or which will execute your containers so the version what we are using as of now is 20.10.21 API version is 1.41 and the same version of the server we are using and the same API version of the server so this is the client version and this is the server version it doesn't matter that you are using some different version of the server and different version of the client you can do that as well but generally I prefer to use the same version client and same version server so that is the reason I have not specified any specific version while doing the installation of my docker clear out the console and next thing is verify the docker engine setup and detail and you can verify the docker engine setup and details using the command docker info so we will execute the docker info hit enter and here we are getting few details you see we executed a command docker info so this is the use of docker cli this is a docker cli by which we can get the output from the docker commands what is the output we are getting that this is the client the context the plugins which are available and we are getting the output on the server these are the number of containers which are available on the server running state container paused state container and stop state container also we are getting the number of image which is available on this server then we are getting few other details like the c group logging drivers volume and there are few more details available for the server so at any point of time if you want to get the detail of the docker server that what is the state of my docker server you can simply execute this command docker info right and you will get all the relevant details whatever the details you want to know clear out the console let's move further and next we will understand a command docker so if you will list out all the docker commands you don't know that what are the docker commands available for the docker right and few commands comes up and few command modify during the version upgrade of the docker so you don't need to remember each and every command if you want any kind of help you can simply go to your docker and type a command docker this will list out all the available commands on the docker 
so if i will simply execute the docker over here hit enter see we are getting a lot of commands let's understand them so here we are getting the use how we can use the docker command so docker command always start with a keyword docker then we have the option and then we have the command what are the options do we have options we have config context debug host log level and hyphen v these are the shortcuts which are available these are the abbreviation and here you are getting the description of these options so you can go through these options to understand it much better now few other commands are there one is a management command and another one is a commands so what are the management command so management commands are basically used to manage the docker right where you want to manage the containers whether you want to manage the services swarm or configuration you need to use the manage command in that case now we have the commands whenever you want to perform some kind of operations you use the commands like attach build commit cp create so these are the commands and in front of the command we are getting the description of each and every command right in front of the command we are getting the description of each and every command so this is the so this is the thing this is the help you can prefer if you don't remember the command you can simply type the docker and you will get the complete list of the command with the details that what is the detail what is the purpose of that command and how you can use it right if you need some more help about a command you can type docker then type your command then hyphen hyphen help so let's understand it suppose we want the help of the image so what we'll do we will type docker image hyphen hyphen help hit enter and see we are getting the complete help details or the commands which are available for the image for the image we have these commands available we are getting the command we are getting the description of that command right so this is the another way how you can get the help on a specific command if you don't know that what are the options do i have with the management command you can use it the another thing is docker management command format so whenever you are executing some management command what you need to do you need to execute the docker then you need to you put the management command and then you need to put the sub command what is the sub command let's go to the terminal again let's take this example we executed so this is the main keyword which we need to use to execute the docker command this is the management command we have seen that there are few management command and we have chose one of them once we ask for the help it is saying that after the docker image we need to perform some command and what are these commands these are these commands let's perform someone so docker image and let's perform the history this is the command so you can see it is saying that docker image history requires one argument so basically this can define the history of the image but it also want to know that for which particular image i want to go with the history in the similar way let's go to some other command like docker container so we will clear out the console so this is the main keyword this is the management command let's type help and these are the commands which we can execute with the docker container command right run rm start so whenever you will execute any command like docker container and after this you will put any sub command like we will put ls what it will do it will list the containers hit exit hit enter and we are getting nothing if we put hyphen a after this hit enter then we are getting something so with the option of hyphen a we will get the all containers available but with the command docker container ls we will only get the running container because we don't have any running container so we are not getting anything over here similarly if you want to perform some other command like docker container run or docker container restart let's perform restart if you will execute this you will get a error see we are getting error it is saying that the format is docker container restart you need to provide the option and you need to provide the container name as well that which container i want to start so this is the main command this is the sub command and after this you need to provide some kind of argument which is accepted by that command so this is the flow and this is the syntax of the docker commands i hope you are getting my point and now you are understanding that how you can execute the docker command on the docker 
it doesn't matter you are using the docker cli which we are using on the docker server or you are using the cli on the docker desktop the behavior will be same but i prefer to explain you the things on the docker server because this is the actual working place where you will be doing the things on the production so we have seen few basic things in the coming lectures we will see few more things about the docker container and team in the coming lectures you will see a mix kind of lecture few lecture will be the new lecture and few lecture will be the old lecture which i created earlier or which are already the part of the existing course where i feel the need that i need to update that lecture i am updating these lecture but where the lectures which already have the perfect content or the usable content they will be untouched and they will be remain the part of the course so it may possible sometime you will get the execution on the different machine i mean to say the white terminal machine sometime you will get the execution on the black terminal machine so don't get confused the command will not change whatever the command i am executing you need to perform the same commands right just the machine will be changed because few are the new lectures and few are the existing lectures so thank you team see you next time hello team welcome back welcome to the docker for devops training and in this particular lecture we will learn about the containers so today we will see how we can execute or start our first container so let's go through the lecture so let's see what we are going to cover in this particular lecture very first we will discuss about the images and containers then we will see how can we execute the containers inside the dockers after that we will see how can we check the container logs and processes so these are the three topics we are going to cover in this particular lecture let's start with so first we will discuss images versus containers but before going to start with the images versus containers i would like to explain why containers required so what is the application of the docker why we are using docker technology why docker is using container technology and what is the images so we have three points to discuss the very first is the docker the second is container and third is image so basically we all are aware if we are learning the docker course then i am sure we are from the technical background and we are working as a freelancer or we are working in some kind of it organization so every one of us know that it in the it industry we are working on the softwares and a software is not a single unit it's not it's just a source code a software is a package right a software is something which requires a lot of library which requires a lot of tool set which requires some kind of dependencies right so when we are moving forward so when suppose we are running a application on the production right so you have you are a developer and you have created some application right that application requires some kind of dependencies that application required a specific environment to execute that application required some other binary to execute on it right so you need to add these dependencies you need to provide that binary to your application and you need to set up a complete execution environment for your application but if you want to ship that application to your customers suppose this is a hosting uh, application or this is something you want to uh, execute that application over the cloud machines right so you need to move all the dependencies all the binaries on the cloud machine plus you need to set up a complete execution environment for your application on the cloud machine with the docker we minimize this effort with the help of the docker we create an executable image of docker right so image is basically a executable format when we are saying uh, we need to uh, to start your application we need we need your source code we need the binaries of the other applications we need some kind of dependencies we need some kind of execution environment so a image is a package of all these things right so image is package of all these things and containers are required to execute that image right so what is image so basically image is the application we want to run 
right? We just want to run our application, but it has a lot of dependencies on other applications as well, and it needs a, part, a particular execution environment. So with the help of the Docker, we will create an executable image that can contain the application binaries, source code, dependencies of the other applications and dependencies of the execution environment, right? With the help of the Docker, we will execute that particular image and the process which is executing that particular image is called the containers, right? So now we are pretty much clear about all these things. So image is something which is an executable format of your application, right? Container is something which is executing that particular image or it's an running instance of that particular image and Docker is something which is providing the execution environment to that container, right? So it solves all our problems. So we just need to set up a Docker and we will execute a single command to start your application. We don't need to provide any runtime dependencies. We don't need to set up any kind of execution environment to before start your application. We have wrapped up everything inside an image and container is basically carrying that image, right? So what are the dockers, containers and images? So images is your application which you want to run, right? And in the Docker image, we include all the things like all the dependencies, all the binaries, all the executables, right? And container is a process or we can say a running instance of your image and Docker is something which is running that image, right? So I hope this is pretty much clear to everyone. What is the Docker? What is container and what are the images, right? Let's move on. Okay, you can have many containers running the same image. Yes, suppose you are running your image over the cloud and you have created a cloud machine which have a lot of capacity, right? Which is running over 32 core bit operating system, right? Sorry, 32 bit or uh, uh, 64 bit operating system and which have the 32 CPUs, right? Which have a lot of, lot of RAM and on that cloud machine, you can create or you can start your application five times, right? So in this way, we will create five containers of your images, right? A container is a running the same image multiple times. So every time container will run your image, it will create a new container itself, right? So on the same hosting machine, you are creating the five containers of the same images. It means on the same hosting machine, your application can execute five times, five folds with the same image. It means on the same hosting machine, you are executing or you are uh, serving five customers. Suppose if your one, one instance of your running image can serve one customers, right? So with the help of the multiple containers, you can serve five customers at the same way on a same hosting machine. In this lecture, we will use open source nginx web server, right? Before going to start with the nginx web server and other stuff, I would like to explain something about the docker central repository, which is hub.docker.com. So let's go to the hub.docker.com and we will discuss about the docker central repository. So right now I am on hub.docker.com and this is the first page which you will which will open when you will hit the url hub.docker.com over here if you don't have your account on hub.docker.com you can sign up and create your account if you have your account then you can click on the sign in button on the right top corner and enter your login credential to insert or to go in inside the hub.docker.com so i will enter my login credentials after the successful login you will land on your dashboard. So I have already published some images so that I'm getting a UI like this. Once you will uh, fresh create your account, you will uh, go to your dashboard. You will not get anything over here. So this is basically, this is the central repository of all the Docker images, right? So hub.docker is the central repository of the, of all the Docker images. You can either create your private account or public account. You can either publish your private image over here or publish image over here. So if you are from a develop, uh, development background, then you can relate it with the Maven central repository 
where we have all the dependencies which is required for the maven application right in the same way let's understand this with the very layman term right so hub.docker.com is a repository where we can push our docker images or we can find out any public docker images right so hub.docker.com is a central repository for the docker right for the docker community so you will find out all the images which you want to execute and that should be public so either you can create your own public image and push it over the hub.docker.com so that you and other people can also use it or you can create your private image and you can share the details with your customers and with your development team so that they can also use it right so suppose you want to search for some kind of image so there is a basic image of the docker.com uh, of the hub.docker which is hello world right so we are getting a lot of images of the hello world you can see see uh, over here right but the official image always have the subtext like official over here right so this is not the official this is automated build this is also automated build and over here we are getting a different kind of naming convention we will discuss about the naming convention in the coming lectures today we will see what are the images and what is all about the hub.docker.com once i will click this link it will open the page of the hello world repository and over here i am getting all the commands and all the useful information about this hello world right so if i want to pull this image in my local then i can execute the command docker pull hello hyphen world right if i want to execute it then we will see what commands we can execute a sample output is here if you will execute hello world then you need to execute the command docker run hello hyphen world and it will display an output like this right so this is the very first image of the docker which you also can execute to verify that your container is running or not sorry your docker is running or not or your docker is able to execute a container or not right so let's open the uh, terminal so that we can open our containers for open that uh, container sorry for open the docker i need to go to my cloud machine so i will ssh my machine enter my password and right now you can see i'm inside my docker machine i clear out the console and increase the font a bit right now suppose you execute a command docker info we have already discussed about the docker info in the last lecture it is saying we have zero containers zero running containers zero post and zero stopped also we have the images zero right i will clear out this console and suppose i want to execute the container hello world so what was the command to execute the container hello world so command was like docker run hello hyphen world right so i will open this command execute this command so i will execute the command docker container hello hyphen world press enter and it is saying okay i forgot to insert the sub command c the manage commands i manage i inserted by forgot to insert the sub command enter the command Con docker container run hello world and you can see over here the output so over here we have executed the command right docker container run hello world so first the message is unable to find the image hello world latest locally so very first when you will start any container the docker will uh, search for that container image in your local machine if it will not find out that image in your local machine you will get a message like this unable to find image image name and locally after that it will pull the image from the hub.docker repository right so if the image which you want to run is not present in your machine 
then docker will pull out that image from the hub.docker repository you don't need to get, you don't need git or anything installed in your machine docker will pull out the image by itself and here is the digest and pull id right after that you can see it has executed your image right clear out the console and now if you will execute the command docker info you will get a different output over here you are getting containers r1 running 0 stopped 1 and images 1 so basically we have already executed a container which was the hello world it executed itself and come out right so that it came in the stopped state and we have the image 1 so hello world image is basically downloaded in my machine which my docker just executed in the last command suppose i will execute the same command again i will execute docker container run hello world and press enter this time i will not i didn't get a message image is not present locally because the hello world image is already present in my machine so it didn't download it the latest image it find out the image in the local and it simply executed it right so this is the image hello world container which is executing the process and docker is the engine which is executing or which is providing the execution environment to the container so we have seen and discussed about the hub.docker.com and we have executed our first image hello world let's move to the next slide so we have already uh, discussed about the hello world so we are going to skip this start with hello world docker image we have discussed about this thing now we will see start nginx web server in docker so very first i will go to my hub.docker.com and i will search for the nginx image and if the nginx image will be available on the hub.docker.com so that i can download it and execute it to execute the nginx image i need this particular command right which is docker container run hyphen hyphen publish the host port colon container port and the image name right so this is the command which we need to use to start the nginx on my docker so let's discuss about this or uh, first we will start the container after then we will discuss about this command so let's move to the image so first i will go to my hub.docker.com and i will search for the nginx image So you can see nginx official image is available on the hub.docker.com and it have 10 million plus pulls plus 9.5k stars i will go to details and here is the all details available for this particular image right how we can use it how we can execute it and all the stuff we are getting over here right so if you want to learn about the image let what that image is uh, all about what it is doing then you can go to the image description or image details and if the the user who have pub, who has published that particular image has provided the enough details about the image so you will get all the details on that particular details page so all about the nginx we are getting all the details over here right so uh, this is your task for for your homework you can go to this particular image page and you can learn about all the configuration and variables and all about this nginx image so that you can understand what all this all about right what what is the what is the meaning of this particular so you can learn about what is all about the images and image description right so we are going to start the nginx and we know that our image name is just nginx right so i will go to my terminal clear out the console and i will execute the command docker container hyphen run hyphen hyphen publish host port which is i am providing 80 colon container port which is also i'm providing 80 and the image name let's discuss about this particular command 
So Docker container run is a command which we can use to run a container. We have already discussed that. What is this? This is something new hyphen hyphen publish. So hyphen hyphen publish we use when some of the application is using some of the applications are the web applications like and they are using some kind of port, right? User needs to enter some kind of port after the URL to access that particular application. So to expose the port over the internet or over the browser, we need the publish command. And host port means this 80 is the host port. Host port means the port which will open on the hosting machine which is executing the image. And after the colon, we will provide the container port. Container ports mean the port which container will open to route the traffic to the application, right? So by default, nginx use 80. So the container port should be 80. But this port, the host port is not limited. You can provide any port over here because this is the port over which the application will be accessible on the hosting machine, right? So let's start the nginx container. Once I will hit the enter, it printed a message unable to find the nginx latest image. Now it is downloading the image and after the complete download, it will start at the nginx. Now you need to go to your browser. Right, open it new tab. And remember, if you are using your local machine, then you need to hit the URL localhost port 80 right but as and it should open your nginx web page but if you are using your docker on a cloud machine like us then you need to enter your ip address like my ip address is 159 dot let me find out the ip address 159.89.142.80 colon port 80 because we have started our nginx on port 80, right? So we can see this is the IP of my machine, right? Of my Linux cloud machine because my Docker is running on my Linux cloud machine. So I need to open this particular IP and this particular ports, port. Once I will hit enter, it will open the nginx web page, right? If you are running the container in your local machine, then you need to hit the URL localhost port 80, right? So as soon as I will hit this particular port, there should be some kind of log generated on my machine, C. So in the background, I have my terminal and over that I have my browser. Once I will refresh my browser, it will generate the logs on my terminal, C. Every request I am refreshing my browser, some logs are being generated on my terminal. So these are the container logs. You can see over here the date, the request, which is a get type and the proxy which is being used, right? So every time I will refresh my web page, a new log being generated over here, right? So if you want to, you can see over here your terminal uh, is or your container is basically running on the foreground, right? Now suppose you want to exit out your container, then press Ctrl C and you will exit out of your container. Now if you want to access your Nginx web server, you will not get to access it, right? Now we have seen the use of Docker container run, publish, host port, container port and the image name. Let's discuss what all the processing is being done behind the picture. So the process was, was done. First, when we executed the nginx start command, then first is downloaded the latest nginx image from the Docker Hub. Then it is started a new container, right? Exposed the container port 80 on the host machine and route the traffic on port 80 inside the containers, right? So this is all the process we have done in the above command. We have seen if you want to stop the container on the foreground, then we need to press the control C. Now there's a new challenge. Suppose we want to execute the container in the background, right? Or in the detach mode. Why this requirement comes? 
suppose you are using uh, your container right you are using your web application or you are using some kind of proxies which you want to run until you want to stop that forcefully right so in that case if you are using your terminal to execute these containers so once you will log out your machine it will stop the process right so you want to execute this process in the background to execute the process in the background we need to append the detach hyphen hyphen detach before the image name inside your command so let's see so i have opened my terminal and i will execute my last command but before the image name i will put hyphen hyphen detach d e t a c h press enter and it will return you the container id that's it and suppose you want to check then you need to go to your browser and refresh this url right and you are able to access your nginx on port 80 right now suppose you want to start a same nginx image on some other port like 8081 so you can do this right all the traffics inside the containers are using port 80 but on the host machine we can open the application on different different port right it also return me the container id once i will go to my browser right and i will open another port and over here i will enter the ip of my address sorry i will enter the ip address of my machine if you are using the containers in your local machine then you can provide the local host over here and then the port new port is port 8081 press enter and we are able to access the nginx application on both of my port on 8081 and on 80 as well and you can see both are basically on the same host machine so this is the beauty of the docker right you can't do this with the help of the vms you can't do this with the help of other hosting applications so suppose you are not using the containers you are executing this particular application on your machine then once a port is basically preserved by any application the same application can't be run on the second port on that particular same machine but with the help of the docker we can execute them you can see the same application running twice on a same machine right now so we have discussed about the detach mode now suppose you want to list all the running containers on your machine right so how can we do that so for this we need to execute the command docker container ls or you can execute the command docker ps so docker ps is a old way right so as we are working on a latest docker right so we need to uh, follow the processor like command then manage commands then the sub commands right docker ps is the old command all together it will work but the new command which we should use is docker container ls i will move to my terminal and i just started two containers one on port 8080 and another on port 8081 i will execute the command docker container ls there is a typo in my docker spelling see we are getting the two running containers this is the container id the image name the command which is executing and the time when this container was created and the status that and the port on what the container is running and the name of the containers right so we have we are executing or we are running two containers there are two running containers on our machine one is with this container id another one with this container id one container is running on port 80 and another container is running on port 8081 right let's discuss about this name so we didn't provide this kind of name right we didn't provide this kind of name so from where these particular names are being picked so basically docker can pick the application or oh sorry the container name from its own directory from its own dictionary right so it can randomly choose any name and it will assign that name to a container on your machine right if you will execute the another command or the deprecated command like docker ps it will also do the same thing right but we should go with the latest commands because we are working 
on the latest technology of the docker so i hope that's all for the day in the coming lectures we will learn about the how we can stop the running containers and how we can remove the containers from the docker thank you guys thanks for your time hello team welcome back welcome to the docker for devops training and in this particular lecture we will discuss how we can stop remove the containers from the docker so let's start with the lecture so in the previous lecture we have discussed how we can execute or how we can create how we can run our first containers right we have seen some more commands about the containers right we have seen about the hub.docker.com the central repository of the docker today we will discuss how we can stop the containers because till now we have just seen how we can start the containers in a foreground mode and in the detached mode right so we have started two containers yesterday in the detached mode but suppose if we want to stop these containers then what is the way right so to stop the containers we have a simple command docker container stop then you need to provide the container id so let's start with the commands to start with the docker commands i need to ssh my remote machine my remote linux machine where i have installed my docker so i will open the terminal and ssh my machine so you can see i'm inside my docker machine i will clear out the console if i will execute the command host name then this will return me the the host name and i know my remote machine host name is docker so yesterday we have executed two containers so suppose we want to see the running containers on our docker so i need to execute the command docker container ls and you can see the two containers two nginx containers are running since last 30 hours so we have created and executed these containers in the last lecture but we didn't stop these right so suppose you want to stop the container which is running on port 80 right so first let's see if we are able to access the nginx on port 80 so i will open the browser and as we discussed in the last lecture if you are running the docker in your local machine then you need to insert localhost colon port 80 but i am using a remote machine so i need to put the ip of my remote machine then colon port 80 so on port 80 i am able to access the nginx right now we will stop the nginx container on port 80 so for this i need to execute the command docker container stop and then i need to provide the container id which i want to stop right so suppose i want to stop this container so i will simply provide this container id and press enter uh oh there was a typo error in the docker command so i will correct it the command is docker container stop then the container id press enter and you can see it is returning the container id now if i will execute container sorry docker container ls then it will return you only single container which is running on port 8081 because we have stopped the container which was running on port 80 if i will go to my browser and refresh it then i am not able to access it but if i change the port to 8081 see on port 8081 i am able to access my nginx container because on port 8081 my nginx is still running so this is the way how can we stop the containers in docker right now suppose 
you have a requirement then you need to list down all the containers although they are running or they are stopped so how can you basically list out the ids of all the containers which have executed on your docker for this we have a command docker container ls a so let's execute it so we are on our terminal we will execute the command docker container ls hyphen a and you can see i am getting a list of containers so basically these are the containers which we have executed inside this docker engine so far right so only one container is running the latest one nginx is running on port 8081 rest all of the containers was exited or stopped so suppose you want to find out the containers which has been executed on your docker engine then you need to execute a command docker container ls a this is the command to list down all the containers which have executed on your docker engine but if you just want to list down the running containers then you just need to insert the command docker container ls and it will list out only the running containers now we will discuss about run versus start commands in the container so we, till now we have only discussed about the run command so basically when you want to execute a container you need to start, uh, execute a command docker container run then the image name right then what is the meaning of the start command why we use start command in the docker so we always use run command in the docker when we need to execute a new container right run command will always start a new container but suppose you want to start an existing container right then you need to use the command start let's see how we can use start command so we are on our terminal right and 2 minutes before we have stopped this container which have the id 27e6c07981ae so we know very well 2 minutes before we have stopped this container and this container was running on port 8080 right so suppose you want to start this container then you need to execute a command docker container start and then the container id right so i need to provide this container id press enter and it will return you the same container id right execute the command docker ls sorry docker container ls and you will see two containers are running and the second container has the same id which was stopped 2 minutes before so with the help of the start command you can start the existing container on your machine but if you will execute or execute the image or the container with the run command it always start a new container on your docker engine right sometimes the start command is helpful sometimes the run command is helpful we will discuss all the scenarios in this particular course in the coming videos now let's move to the next slide so we will discuss about the containers names so suppose till now we have seen my containers have some specific name and suppose i want to provide some kind of meaningful name to my container then how can i provide a meaningful name to my container right for this i can use the command docker container hyphen hyphen public host port container port hyphen hyphen detach hyphen hyphen name and then provide the name so all the command is same we have used earlier just one parameter is extra in this particular command which is hyphen hyphen name right so let's see how can we use this particular parameter so till now we have seen our containers have some kind of names so my first container have some kind of elastic permal right 
my second container is also have some name my third container is also have some name so there is a names of the container right suppose they all are nginx this nginx is running on port 8081 and this nginx is running on port 80 right we have stopped this container suppose we are going to stop the container which is running on port 8081 so docker stop sorry docker container stop then the container id which is this right container is down execute the command docker container ls and you will see only one container is running which is on port 80 right clear out the console and execute the command docker container ls space hyphen a it will list out all the containers which was executed on this particular docker engine now somebody will ask you which container was running on port 8081 so by this particular information you would not be able to define which container was running on port 8081 so sometimes you need the uh, you need the you need to name the containers with some specific string so in this way we will see how we can name the container right so when we uh, have a requirement to provide some kind of custom name to my container so we can use the name property of the docker container so let's see how can we use the name property of docker container for this i'm going to start a new container on port 8081 so we will start the command docker container run hyphen hyphen publish to publish on the host port and the port should be 8081 then define colon then container port then detach to execute the container in the background space there is a new parameter what I'm going to insert hyphen hyphen name and I will name it anything what I want so like I'm going to name it web host 8081 right then the image name what I'm going to run so I'm going to run the nginx press enter so you can see a container is being executed if I will execute a command docker container ls so it will provide you the list of running containers and you can see the name is the name which you have provided to execute the container right so this is the property of the name command with the help of the name you can provide the custom name to your containers and now suppose you want to see the logs of a specific container then how can you see the name of particular container for this you can execute the command docker container logs then the container name or container id so let's see how can we get the name sorry get the logs of the containers so suppose we want to see the logs of a container which is running on port 8081. So for this, suppose we are going to generate some logs. So I will go to my browser and refresh my nginx container again and again. Right. So I have refreshed it two to three, three times. Now I go to my terminal and execute the command docker container logs. Then either I can provide the container ID, which is this or I can provide the container name, right? So I'm going to provide the container name. If you want, you can also provide the container ID. Press enter and it will list the latest logs generated on your containers, right? So, so right now, the four lines of logs are being over here. I refresh it two more times. Again, go to my terminal and execute the log command for my container. Now I will get few more lines. So, so using this way we can get the logs of a container of a running container right now we will discuss another command docker top so suppose you want to see the running processes inside your container right a single container in the docker can execute multiple processes 
as per the architecture of the application. So NGNX architecture is basically like master and worker architecture. So in the NGNX, you will always find one master or one worker or two worker, right? So we will execute the command to get the running processes inside the container docker container top then container id. So let's execute this command. So I'll go to my terminal. And I will find out my running containers. So these are two running containers and suppose I want to know the process or running process of container one, right? So I will execute the command docker container top then either container name or container ID. Press enter. So it will return you the process ID. Right and UID. So you can see over here the process 3271 is running which is a nginx master process and another process double three double one is running which is nginx worker process right so with the help of the top command you can find out the running processes of any container so in this particular slide we have discussed how we can provide a name to our container how we can verify the logs of a container and how we can uh, get the running processes of my container let's move to the next one and suppose you want to remove all unused containers then how can you remove the all unused containers for this you can execute the command docker container rm then if you want to remove the multiple containers then you need to provide the space separated container ids or you can just provide a single container id to remove that container right let's see so here is my terminal and I will execute the command docker container ls hyphen a it will list out all the running and stopped containers and suppose I want to stop remove all the containers which is which has executed on this docker engine for this I will execute the command docker container rm then I need to provide the container IDs space second container id which you want to remove space third container id which you want to remove right press enter so these three containers should be removed the two was hello world and one was nginx i will again execute the same command docker container ls hyphen a right so you can see the last three containers is being removed from my list right now suppose I want to remove a running container in the docker so I will execute the command docker container rm and I will pass the running container ID like this this is the running container right which is up so I will pass this ID press enter so docker will give you an error and error response from the daemon you cannot remove running containers stop the container before attempting removal or force remove right so this is for the security purpose so by human mistake sometimes you remove the running containers which may impact your running application so docker has provided this kind of security in their architecture so that you can't remove the running containers right so to, running, to remove the containers first you need to stop them or you need to forcefully remove them right so we have already seen how we can stop the containers and how we can remove the containers now we will see suppose if you want to remove the container forcefully then how can you remove the container forcefully for this we need to execute the same command docker container rm press hyphen f and then the container id and this is the container ID which we want to remove and this is this right which is the running container on port 80 right I will press enter and this is being removed I will execute the command docker container ls hyphen a 
see the port 80 container is being removed right so this is the way how can you remove the multiple containers from your docker how can you remove a single container from your docker how can you remove the stopped containers and how can you remove the running containers right so that's all for the day in the coming lecture we will learn some new things about the docker thank you we'll see you in the next lecture Hello team, welcome to the Docker training and in this particular lecture we are going to discuss about the Docker internal processing when we are executing the Docker run command. So let's start with. So we will see when we are executing the Docker container run command what is internally is being processed with the Docker. So very first Docker will look in the cache image cache for the image which we want to execute right so suppose we are executing a command docker run nginx so nginx is the image which we want to run with the help of the docker so after this command docker first look into the image cache for that particular image if that image is not available in the local then Docker go to the Docker remote repository. By default, it is hub.docker.com and download the latest version of the image. If you have provided the specific version of the image inside the command, then Docker will download that specific version of that particular image. If it's find the Docker image inside the image cache, then it will not go to the hub.docker.com and will not download the latest version or the specified version of that image right now after this based on the image what is find it will start a new container right so we have already seen all these things now from the networking point of view docker gives a virtual ip on the private network inside the docker engine on which that particular container will execute right so docker internally will assign an ip to that particular container so let's see so here is my terminal and i'm inside my docker machine so i will execute a command docker container ls right so here is the container here is the image which is which it is executing the command which docker is executing and created 40 minutes ago and the ports by default you can see inside the container it is running on ip 0.0.0.0 right so basically docker creates its own virtual private network and define a specific ip to every container right we will discuss all these things inside the coming lectures when we learn about the docker networking concepts now we will discuss about the ports so in our previous commands we have published some ports the first port was denoted the host machine port and the second port was denoted the container ports after that docker will open and port suppose we uh, provided port 80 in the command then it will open the port 80 on the host machine where the docker engine is running and route all the traffic on the port 80 inside the containers right so there are two ports which docker is using to run that particular nginx image because this is the architecture of the nginx internally it will accept the traffic on port 80 and outside you can configure any port on which the traffic will route to the local container port 80 after that it will start the container with the help of com, uh, command cmd in the image docker file so till now we have not discussed this particular stuff when we learn about the docker file and docker image then we will see how docker will basically run the image with the help of the cmd inside the docker file right so that's all this is all things which docker is running or processing when we are executing the docker nginx process and the docker engine.
Thank you. Thanks for your time. In the coming lecture, we'll see some more interesting stuff about the Docker. Hello team, welcome back. And today we will discuss about the containers versus VM. So in this particular lecture, we will discuss about the containers and we will discuss about the virtual machines. And we will see how containers are different from the virtual machines. So first, we will see some kind of similarities and some kind of differences between the containers and the virtual machines. So containers and virtual machines both have similar resource allocation and allocation benefits. In this way, we can compare the containers and virtual machines. They all run on a single host machine, right? On a single host machine, I can execute multiple containers. And this is true for the virtual machines as well. On a single host system, I can execute multiple virtual machines, right? And what all about the containers and virtual machines? So when I'm basically running the multiple virtual machines on a single host machine, then I'm allocating some specific chunk of resources to a specific VM, a specific virtual machine. This is true for the containers as well. When I'm running multiple containers on a single host machine, then basically I'm allocating a specific resources to that particular container, right? In the previous lectures, we have seen, we have executed the Nginx web server on port 80 and port 8081. So in that way, we have allocated two port, which is the resource of the hosting machine, the port 80 and port 8081 to different different containers. So basically containers and virtual machines both have similar resource allocation and allocation benefits. But the containers and the virtual machine are functionally different. Why? Because the containers virtualize the operating system, but the virtual machines virtualize the hardware. To understand this particular statement, we need to go through the coming slide. And this is also the true that containers are more portable. So suppose you have set up four virtual machines on single host machine, right? Now you want to port these virtual machine with their own running processes and attributes then the virtual machines are as compared to the containers are hard to port, right? But the containers are more portable. You are running a single container like we was running the Nginx server on a container which is on the host machine. Suppose tomorrow I will change the host machine. So what I else need to do, I just need to install the Docker and execute that Nginx image. That's it. Nothing else I need to do to port my Nginx web server from one host machine to na another host machine which is not true with the virtual machines, right? When we are saying we will port the complete virtual machines, then we need to port the complete resource allocation. We need to port the, all the processes which is running on virtual machine A. So let's understand the second statement when we have mentioned that containers are different with the virtual machine, that containers virtualize the operating system, but virtual machines virtualize the hardware. So here is a specific diagram about the containers and about the virtual machines. The first diagram, the containers or containerized application are about the functionality of the container. And the second diagram, virtual machines, virtual machines, virtual machines are basically all about the virtual machines. So let's just start. So they are two hosting machines, right? So Host machine A is running the container and host machine B is running the virtual machines. So when we are saying we are running the host machine A, then you can say the infrastructure is there, then the operating system which is running on the host machine and on that particular operating system, we are running the Docker, right? So you can see the infrastructure layer is the uh, lowest layer and after that we have the second layer which is host operating system, right? So we have set up a Linux cloud machine, right? Which is, so Linux is my host operating system. And over the Linux, we have installed the Docker. So Docker is basically installed over the host operating system, right? So this is a st this is statement is quite true because for the Mac, we have separate Docker setup. For the Linux, we have separate Docker setup. 
for the windows we have separate setup for the aws for we have separate uh, setup and in the same way we have different different kind of images which belongs to different different kind of operating systems so docker always execute as the above layer on the operating system right and on that docker we can run multiple containers so you can see the app a app b app c app d app e and app f all are the containerized application which is running on the docker so what docker is doing docker is basically virtualizing the host operating system right it's virtualizing the host operating system to the containers but the statement is not true about the virtual machines right on the virtual machine we will either use the hyper version or we will use some virtual setups right and every virtual machine have their own operating system they have their own specific allocated memory on the hardware right so the virtual machine a may have their own operating system which could be linux could be windows could be mac and could be anything right the virtual machine 2 have their own operating system and virtual machine 3 have their own operating system and basically when we are creating the virtual machines so we are allocating a specific resource of that host machine to that particular virtual machine right so suppose we have a host machine which have the ram 32 gb and which have the sda uh, about 500 gb right and if we are creating four virtual machine on that particular host machine and we are allocating 2 gb ram and 25 gb hard disk to every virtual machine so in this way we are basically defining or we are basically virtualizing the hardware right the hardware configuration we are virtualizing right this is not the operating system based virtualization we are dedicating or we are allocating a specific hardware resource to a specific virtual machine this is not true in the case of the docker docker is just virtualizing the operating system rest the memory allocation the resource consumption will be allocated at runtime right so this is the difference between the containers and virtual machines so containers are most optimized in the way of resource saving as compared to the virtual machines containers are not the virtual machines containers are just the processes right we have already discussed we have seen we have executed some containers so container are just the processes there is no uh, fixed memory allocation there is no fixed resource allocation to the container containers are limited what resources they can access right so we have uh, earlier seen that if we want to execute some container on some kind of specific port so i am allowed to do that and the container which is running on that particular port is basically limited to access that port only right so containers are limited what the resource they can access containers exit when the process exits so let's see the statement right so to discuss it further i have opened my docker machine in my terminal right so if i will execute a command docker container ls then it will return me the running container id so only one container is running on my docker right so you can see that particular container is running on my docker machine and we have stated that containers are just the processes right so suppose i want to see what process this particular container is running so i will execute docker container top and then the container id press enter so you can see the two processes is basically running in this container the first is nginx master process and second is nginx worker process now suppose i want to see how many processes are running on my host machine for this i will execute the command ps space a u x press enter and it will list out all the processes running on your host machine right so over here we can see there are two processes are running on this host machine this is the nginx master which is the process id is 3271 and the nginx worker process id is 3311 
they are the same we have seen when we executed the docker top 2371 right so basically you can see the container is just running the process on the host machine right if you want to just see the process which is running the nginx then you can execute the command ps aux pipe then grep and then nginx press enter and this will return you the process which is running the nginx and you can see this is the master process this is the worker process and this is the command itself we have executed to search for the nginx process right suppose i will stop my docker right so docker container ls and i will execute the command docker stop and the container id which is c4677 if you will provide 3 to 4 digit of the starting of your container id then docker will automatically recognize it and close it right if i will execute the command docker container ls so you can see nothing will be returned right it means the nginx container which was running on my machine has been stopped now if i will execute the command ps aux pipe grep nginx so let's see what we will get so we are not getting any process so process is exited right so when we stop the container the process exited itself so basically the containers are just the running process the executable instance of your image right this is not the case with the virtual machines virtual machines have their own operating system virtual machines have their own memory allocation virtual machines have their own ram virtual machines have their own processes right in the case of the docker and containers the all processes are running on the host machine only okay there is no separate operating system which is running the processes for your docker right so that's all about the containers versus virtual machines i hope the concept of the virtual machines and the containers are pretty much clear to everyone if you still have the question you can raise your question in question and answer forum and i will happy to answer you thank you guys hello team welcome to the docker for devops training and this lecture is all about the assignment so today i am uh, providing you assignment to manage multiple containers in a docker so let's see what you need to do so this is an assignment for you till now we have discussed a few things about the containers we have discussed how we can run the containers how we can stop the containers how we can rename the containers and many more things about the containers which is required as a basic knowledge so today i'm posting this particular assignment for you so that you guys can do some homework and can do some hands on on the docker stuff so very first please list down these two links docs.docker.com and dash dash help command they will be very helpful when you are stuck in anything on a docker docs.docker.com is a document for the docker which is an open source and community version right so anyone can put some information on that particular website and which is always up to date so if you are stuck in some commands with the docker if you want some kind of knowledge about the docker then docs.docker.com is a very helpful resource to learn about the docker and learn about the new things of new versions in a docker dash dash help command will list down all the commands which is available with the docker so let's see so right now i am on docs.docker.com right and over here i am getting a lot a lot of things right a complete documentation a complete a complete open source and a lot of lot of documentation is available on docs.docker.com so your uh, it's your uh, turn to explore this particular docs and learn what is required for you right so once i will go for the docs so i will get a lot of information like how can i get the docker how can i start and very 
helpful information over here right over here we have the product manuals right we have docker cloud and the complete product manual right we have the references we have the samples so there is a lot of lot of thing available on this particular website for a beginner and the docker i always some sometime refer this website when i want to learn some new things about the docker on which i don't have still hands on right now open the terminal or oh, let me found if i have already yes so you can see i am inside my docker machine if i will execute the command docker version then this will return me the docker version install on machine so docker space dash dash help this is a very helpful command right this will list down all the commands and manage commands which is available with the docker so if you want to learn a new command if you want to try some new commands then you can go through the help and learn about that command and with the every command it has a very short description of this particular command so you can google about this command you can uh, try these commands so basically docs.docker.com and docker help are very helpful resource if you are learning the technology docker technology right now let's see what we have an assignment for you guys so we need to run multiple containers right so i want you would run nginx container mysql container and apache server on your docker right we are not going to set up a fully functional application till we just want to run these three containers on your docker machine right so before going to start with these containers there are some guidelines which you need to follow in this particular assignment first i would like to you that you will run all the containers in the background also provide a specific or unique name of all the containers which you are running you should start the nginx on port 80 on host machine and port 80 on container you should start apache server on port 8080 on your host machine and on port 80 on your container so if you have question then we are running port 80 start for nginx as well and we are running port 80 for apache server as well so here you you should notice that last the left the right hand port is basically the container port and every container is an uh, atomic or you can say is an individual process so these process can have the duplicate ports right because the container a is not related to the container b so nginx is running in a container a and apache server is running in a container b and you need to start mysql on port 3306 on your host machine and 3306 on your container so these are the things we need to uh, carry when we are doing this particular assignment there are few more things which we need to uh, carry when we are doing this particular assignments so these are the things which you need to carry when you are doing this particular assignment right so basically when you will start a mysql container it will ask you to provide there is a option to provide the environment variable at the time of start of the container right so you need to use hyphen hyphen env command to pass the environment variable and i want you would pass the environment variable mysql underscore random underscore report root underscore password equals to yes so it will generate the random password for you to log in into your mysql containers right so basically this is a very common way of the containers sometimes we need to pass the environment variables to the containers so with the help of hyphen hyphen env or hyphen e command you can pass the environment variables to your containers and all the containers can have the different different sets of environment variable for the testing environment for the production environment and for the deployment environment then you need to use docker container log command on mysql container to find out the random password after you started the mysql container right and in last clean all the containers after this assignment is done so this is the assignment for you 
you need to manage these multiple containers in this particular assignment. So in the next lecture, I will post the solution of this particular assignment, but I would highly recommend you that you should done it by yourself without any help from the next lecture. I will post the solution in the next lecture. Thank you guys. Thanks for your time. Hello team, welcome back. Welcome to the Docker for DevOps training. In the previous lecture, I have posted an assignment for you. Today, we will see the answer of this particular assignment. So I'm going to solve that assignment for you. So assignment was to manage multiple containers, right? This lecture is an answers to the previous lecture assignment. So if you have done your assignment by yourself, with the help of the docs.docker.com, with the help of the Google, with the help of any other kind of resource, then that's pretty much good, right? If you still not tried the previous lecture assignment, then I would like to recommend, please try that assignment by yourself before watching this particular lecture, right? It may be possible that the command which we are going to execute in this particular lecture may be different from the commands which you have executed to complete your previous assignment. But the only things matter is the end result, right? So let's start with. So the assignment was to start the Nginx, MySQL and Apache server. And the some conditions was like all containers should run in the background. Provide a name to all containers. Start nginx on port 8080. So let's start with the nginx. So I am on my terminal and I have logged in in my machine where my docker is running. So if I will execute the command docker dash dash version. So it will return with the running version of the docker which is 18.06.1 CE, right? Now I will start my nginx. So to start the nginx, I will use the command docker container run then execute in the background. For this, I will use hyphen hyphen detach. You can replace this command with single hyphen and D space. I need to publish the port hyphen hyphen publish port 80 colon 80. The first 80 port is open on the host machine and second 80 port will open on the container. If you want to short the publish command as well, then you can simply replace the publish with hyphen P. Right? So we can replace the hyphen hyphen detach with the hyphen D and we can replace the hyphen hyphen publish with the hyphen P. These are the short uh, abbreviation of these commands detach and publish. Now I need to provide the name. With the help of name command, I will provide some name to my nginx server. So I will call it proxy server and the image name what I want to run. So I want to run nginx. Just press enter. So you can see the container is started, right? If I will go to my browser and enter the command, the IP of the machine where the Docker is running. So my Docker is running on the cloud machine. So I will enter my cloud machine IP. Then colon and the port we have provided. So it will open the nginx web page. If you are running the Docker in your local machine, then you need to insert the URL like localhost colon port 80, right? Instead of the localhost, you can also mention your local machine IP. So it should open the nginx web page like this on your machine. Now 
let's start with the second one after the nginx i need to start a new container which is apache server on port 8080 right so let's see before it starts the apache server we need to visit hub.docker.com to find out the name of image of the apache server I will log into my account. After the successful login on hub.docker.com, user will redirect to the dashboard. Right? Over here, you need to go to search and search for the Apache server. When you will search for the Apache server, you will get a lot of list of the search. Right? Over here, the first one is the official and name is HTTPD. This is the actual image of the Apache server. I will go to details by click on this link. And over here, the image name of the Apache server is HTTPD, right? And we are getting all the details related to this in the description. This is Apache HTTP server, right? And here are some more details of this particular image, right? So I will go to my terminal and I know in past I never started the Apache server. So this is the first time when I'm going to start a Apache server. So it will look for the image in the image cache and it will not find out the Apache server image in the image cache. So it will download the image, extract the image and then execute the container, right? So I will execute the command docker container run hyphen D to start the process in the background hyphen P to publish the port and on host machine I want to publish Apache server on port 8080 and on container on port 80 hyphen hyphen name to provide the container a specific name and I will name it web server after that, you need to provide the image name and image name is HTTPD, right? Press enter. So it is downloading the image first. And after the complete download, it will extract the image and execute that image for you. See, the Docker is started, right? If you will execute the command Docker container ls. So you will see two containers are running. One is nginx and second is httpd, right? And names are similar, which we have provided the proxy server and the web server. Let's clear out the console and we will proceed with the third container. So the third container which we plan to start is MySQL container and we should start it on port 3306 and inside the container as well port 3306 but we have some kind of require a uh, prerequisite as well. And the prerequisite to start the MySQL container was we need to provide the hyphen hyphen env environment variable to the MySQL container, right? And environment variable is MySQL underscore random underscore root underscore password equals to yes. After this, we need to search for the random password in the MySQL container logs. So let's start with. I am on my terminal and I will execute a command docker container run hyphen D to start the container in the background hyphen P for the port 3306 and inside the container the port will be same 3306. Right, I will name it MySQL DB and with the help of hyphen hyphen env, I will pass the environment variable which was MySQL underscore random underscore root underscore password equals to yes. And then I need to 
provide MySQL image name. For this, I will go to hub.docker.com and in the search, I will type MySQL. Press enter. Uh oh, there's a typo. It is MySQL. And here is the official image of the MySQL. I will click this. And image name is MySQL itself. So I will go to my terminal. And type MySQL. Right. So MySQL also I'm executing this particular container first time on my Docker engine. So it will first download the MySQL, then extract the image and then execute this image. Let's hit enter. So it is basically downloading the MySQL. The size of this image is close to 500 MB. So just wait until the download will complete. And it's done. Now we need to find out the password of my MySQL. For this, I need to check the log with the help of the log command. So Docker container logs then the image sorry then the container name and container name was mysql db hit enter and there is no command like this uh oh i forgot c there's a typo in the docker c hit enter and it will print out the complete log of your MySQL. Now we need to find out the password which was generated automatically, right? So over here we are getting generated root password, right? You can copy this password for the future use, right? But we are not going to configure the complete environment right here. So there is no need. So we will leave it as it is. I just want to show you the way how we can do it, right? I will clear out my console. And in last, we need to clean all containers after the assignment is done, right? So we need to clean all the containers which we have executed. So we are on our terminal. We will execute the command docker containers ls. So, okay, docker container ls. So see, Three containers are basically running. The one is MySQL DB, the another one is web server, and the third one is proxy server. Let's clear the console and execute the command again. Now I need to stop these containers. So I will execute the command docker stop and then the container name, which is MySQL DB. and web server and proxy. If you want to auto complete the names, you can simply press the tab after some starting characters. Hit enter and it will stop all the containers. Again, hit the command docker container ls. So see, no container is running, right? If I will execute the command docker container ls space hyphen a, so we can see the all containers are exited. OK, if you want to remove these containers completely, you can execute the command docker. Container. RM and then the containers name like MySQL DB. Web server. And proxy server. And if you want, you can remove the web host 8081 as well. Hit enter. All the containers are being removed. Execute the command again. Docker container ls a and you will not get anything. So we have cleaned up all the containers we have executed. So this is the complete assignment answer for you, right? So we have learned a lot of things in this particular assignment as well. In the coming uh, section, we will learn some advanced things about the containers. Thank you. Thanks for your time.
Hello team, welcome back. Welcome to the Docker for DevOps training. And in this particular lecture, we are going to discuss about the CLI monitoring of containers. So today we are starting the advanced section of the containers. Over we will learn about the CLI cell scripting of the containers. We will see the networking concepts of the containers. And then we'll we see how we can monitor and inspect the containers. So today we are going to learn how we can basically monitor the containers with the help of command line. So this lecture is all about to CLI monitoring and inspection of your running containers. So we will see what's going on inside my running containers, like how many resources are being consumed, what resources are being consumed and what processes are running inside my running containers. So very first we will start a simple command docker container top. So basically the docker container top will list you the processes which is running inside your containers. So let's see on the terminal that how docker container top will work for my container. So I'm on my terminal and I have logged in inside my docker machine which I have created over the cloud, right? If you are using your local then you just need to go to your terminal. On my terminal I will execute a command docker container ls press enter so you can see nothing is being returned. It means no container is running on my machine, right? So first I will start a container on my machine. So very first I will start the nginx on my machine. For this I will execute the command docker container run hyphen d for the detach mode. dash dash name and I will name it proxy web server then I will call nginx my image name Now you can see a container is running. Now if I will execute a command docker container ls. So I will get the running container. The image is nginx and name is proxy web server which I just provided to my container. Now I am going to execute a mysql on my machine. Now let's execute a command docker ps. or you can execute a command docker container ls and you will get nginx container is running and the name is proxy web server I just provided to my nginx server. Now I will start another container of mysql. So I will execute a command docker container hyphen d hyphen hyphen name and I will call it mysql db then hyphen hyphen env to pass the environment variable and environment variable name would be mysql underscore random underscore root underscore password equals to true and then I will pass my image name which is mysql. Hit enter and it is saying this error with the hyphen d. Okay, I forgot to mention the command run. So I will execute the command docker container run hyphen d. Right, this is a silly mistake I did. Just press enter and it will return you the container id. I will clear out my console. and execute the command docker container ls. See, I am getting two containers running on my machine. One is mysql and another is nginx, right? The container name of the mysql is mysql db and the container name of nginx is web proxy server or proxy web server. Now we will see how we use the docker container top. 
so we will execute the command docker container top after this either you can provide the container name or you can provide the container id first let's start with the container id so suppose i am providing the container id of the nginx right hit enter and it will show the two process are running this is the process id right and two process are running in the nginx container the first is nginx master process and another is nginx worker process so with the help of the top command we can verify how many processes are running inside my container right in the same way if i would like to know the how many processes are running with my mysql db then i will execute a command docker container top and i will replace the container id or i will enter the container name right so it will show you the processes running inside your mysql db container so only one process is running on your mysql db container and the process id is 3952 so this is the way how can we verify that how many processes are running inside my running container let's see how we can inspect the container so suppose we want to get the details or the configuration details of any running container then how can we inspect or how can we get the configuration detail of running container so for that we will use the command docker container inspect right and if you want to run the command docker container stat it will provide you the performance of the running containers so let's start and get the details of both of these commands docker container inspect and docker container stats right so we'll go to our terminal clear out my terminal and first i will execute a command docker container inspect and suppose i want to know the uh, inspect the running container which is proxy web server this is my nginx server okay and web proxy web server is the name which i just provided to my nginx server i will hit enter and it will show you the running details of your nginx server see a complete json is being printed over here right once i executed a command a complete json is being printed over here see this is a very very long json which is being printed over here and this json will provide you the complete information of your running container right so over here the very first is the id this is the container id right and then we are getting the created the date and time stamp where that particular container is being created and the path and it is saying that it's nginx the status is running running is true paused false restarting false and there is a lot of lot of things like the process id as well and started at finished end and what image actually it is being used and what are the path inside the containers where the files are being located right so you can get all the details over here right what is the name of the container which is proxy web server right and here a lot of lot of information like network is default we will learn about it in the coming lectures a very very long details are being getting we are getting over here right so basically when we want to debug a container we need this command right to debug a container right so docker container inspect will provide you the configuration details of your running container right in the same way if you want to get the config if you want to get the configuration detail of mysql you can execute the command docker container inspect my sql db which is my container name if you want you can provide the container id as well just hit enter and it will show you docker container inspect okay there is a typo error right and hit enter see a complete json is being printed for the mysql as well right if we go through the complete json then we will get the details so this is the container id right after that it is getting the created date after that the path right which is this the arguments which is mysql id 
and in the same way you will get the name of your container you will get the restart count you will get the platform somewhere you will get the networking mode somewhere else you will get the port as well so there is a lot of lot of configuration information is basically available when you execute a command docker container inspect and then you pass the ins either the container name or the container id so with the help of the inspect command we can get the configuration details of the running container right this will not provide you the configuration details of the stopped or exited containers okay this will only provide you the configuration details of the running container so let's clear out the console now suppose you want to know uh, you want to check the status the performance or the memory or you can say the resource consumptions of your container then you can execute a command docker container inspects oh sorry stats docker container stats hit enter and it will give you the complete details or the resource consumption which is being used by your containers so the only drawback with the status or this sorry with the stat commands is it will give you the container id instead of the container name so with the with the help of the id it is hard or uh, basically which container is being running but in the earlier version this was the problem but in the newest or latest dockers we are also getting the name right with the version i think with the version 16 dot uh, the version which is prior to the 16.0.8 there was the problem with the stats command it will not show you the name of the containers but with the latest versions of the docker the issue is resolved it will show you the container id as well as the container name so you so that you can get which container is consuming uh, what uh, what what amount of resources right so you can see mysql db is consuming 0.45 or 47 cpu and the memory uses is close to 400 mb right and limit is about 2 gb right it is using 18.36 memory right and here is the input output here is the process id and the second container which is nginx it is using almost 0% cpu and 1.3 megabyte memory only right so with the help of the stats you can get the containers static st st statistics data right so this is all about today in the coming lectures we will learn how we can basically enter inside the containers and execute some shell commands so that's all for the day thank you guys thanks for your time hello team welcome back in the previous lecture we have discussed about the docker cli Today we are going to discuss how we can SSH in a running container, right? So we will see what is the requirement of SSH the running containers and what else we can do after SSH the running containers. So let's start with. So today we are going to discuss how we can go inside the containers and modify something if it is required. And we will do it with the help of the SSH, with the help of the shell commands by opening a terminal inside the running containers. So what is the requirement of this? how we can do it and, and how we can exit out once we will complete so basically when you will start and container then there may be some kind of requirement you need to change the port you need to execute some commands inside your container you need to modify that container as per your production or as per your test environment right but that's fine if suppose we are going to modify something inside the containers then we can also do it in the image but for that you need to create the new image every time when you are debugging your container when you are developing your container right so better option is you can easily modify the running containers and verify the results so to modify the running containers we need to use the container terminal so we will open the container terminal right we will see how we can open a terminal inside the containers and, and then we will see what kind of commands we can execute on the terminal and we will see how we can exit out from that terminal for this first we need to start a container or first we need to run a container in an interactive mode and we will use the command docker container run 
hyphen i hyphen t or you can simply execute docker container run hyphen it so we are going to discuss about this command in a very detailed manner right now you just need to remember we will use docker container run hyphen it to start a container in an interactive mode when i'm saying in interactive mode it means user can interact with the running containers so let's go to the terminal and start a container with docker container run command and open the terminal inside it so i'm on my terminal and if i will execute the command docker container ls then i will see only one container called nginx is running so i'm going to use my command to start a container in interactive mode so i'm going to start a container with the help of docker container run in interactive mode but before this i will see a help of docker container run for this we will execute docker container run dash dash help hit enter and over here you will see few options so first we will learn about the syntax of the docker container run command so here is docker container run this is the command then we need to provide the options then the image name and then we can provide the commands and arguments which we want to supply to our running container now we will discuss about the hyphen i and hyphen t so let's scroll a bit and here is the hyphen i this is saying interactive keep stdin open if not a test so it will keep your session open with a terminal right and which command will be used to open the terminal the hyphen t c hyphen t is used for hyphen tty this will allocate a pseudo terminal to your session right so we will now we will open up or we will start a nginx container in interactive mode for this i will execute a command docker container run then i need to provide the options so i will provide hyphen it to open the interactive terminal then i will provide the name of my container i will name it web proxy then the image name and after this i need to supply the commands so suppose i want to open a bash in my container the container is nginx so i will supply bash over here hit enter so you can see the id and the user is being changed earlier i was on this particular machine right now it is returning you the current container id you are right now inside your container if you will execute a command ls hyphen a then you can see these are the files which is present inside your container this is the docker environment bin boot dev etc lib lib64 media mnt op there are a lot of files which is present inside your containers right now you are running inside your container if i will execute a command ls hyphen lrt then you can see these are the files or these are the directories which is present inside your container right so right now i am on a terminal of my container i am not a terminal of my local machine i am running a bash of my container and the container name is nginx if you want to exit from this terminal then you can simply execute a command exit hit enter and you will exit out now you return back to your local machine see i return back to my local machine so this is the way how you can open the terminal of your container now i will execute a command docker container ls and you can see only one container is running right and the container name is quiz call good all right this is not the container we started we started the web proxy if i will execute a command docker container ls hyphen a now you can see with the help of command docker container ls hyphen a i am getting all the containers which are been executed on this machine so this is the container web proxy we provided this particular name to my container and this is exited as soon as we entered the command exit so using this way you can just start your container and modify something inside your container right but as soon as you will press the exit command it will stop your container you can also see there's a difference inside the commands this is the default command which will be execute once the nginx start by default without any command but we started with a but we started our nginx with the command bash so we are getting bash over here right so this is the way how you can modify the containers how you can go inside the running container so today we have discussed how we can start a container and modify it in the coming lecture we will see how we can 
modify already running containers. So thank you guys. Hello team, welcome back. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about the docker run command. We have seen how we can start a container and open the terminal in that container. Today, we are going to start with some other commands and we will see how we can execute the commands in already running container. So let's start with. So today, we are going to discuss how we can get inside the running containers and execute few commands. So we will go inside the running containers and execute any desired command. So this is a very helpful extension in the docker which we will use to debug analyze any kind of issue and we can change anything inside the running container for this we need to use the docker exec command and the format would be like this so to change anything or to go inside the running containers you can use a command docker container exec hyphen it here exec is a stand for execution and we have already discussed about the hyphen i and hyphen t so it will open the terminal of a running container or it will directly insert a command inside the running container. So we will see how we can open the terminal of a running container or how we can directly insert a commands inside the running container. The docker exec commands runs a new command inside the running containers. So we are going to discuss this particular stuff with example. So here is the full flash example. First, we will discuss about the steps, then we will execute the same scenario on Docker. So let's discuss an example and execute an example to understand the Docker exec and Docker run command or to identify the difference between the Docker exec and Docker run command. So in this particular example, we are going to follow these steps. So first, we will start and nginx, then we will run commands to create directory inside the running container, right? After this, we will verify the new directory which we have created inside my running nginx container. After this, we will download a new Linux Alpine distro on my Docker. So Alpine is a very small Linux distro which is available on the Docker central repository. After this, we will use some curl command to view the Facebook homepage DOM on Alpine, right? So these are the things we are going to execute on a Docker. So let's so first. I will go to my terminal and I will verify is there any nginx container running or not. For this, I will execute a command docker container ps. So you can see an nginx container id ff-d6f is running on my docker machine, right? So this is the running container. Now, as per our task, as per our scenario, we want to insert something in this particular running container. Very first, we need to verify the directories which are available inside the nginx. For this, I will start a new container of nginx and I will verify the directories which are present inside the nginx image. For this, I will execute a command docker container run hyphen it hyphen hyphen name nginx web then support then provide my nginx image name and bash hit enter. So right now I am in my image of my nginx. If I will execute a command ls hyphen a, then I can see these are the directories which are present inside my nginx image. If I will go to temp and again execute a command ls. So inside the ls, I don't have anything. Inside the ls, I don't have any directory. You can see there is only few hidden directories, but no public directory is available inside the temp of my nginx image. I will exit out this container. Now I will see how we can execute the docker exec command. For this, I will execute a command docker container exec. I will execute the docker container exec in interactive mode. We have discussed about it. Then I need to provide either name or ID of my running container. And this is the ID of my running container. So I will provide the ID of my running container. Then to create a directory inside a running container, I can use command touch, provide the path. So path is temp. And suppose inside the temp, I want to create a directory name unshul. Hit enter and command is completed. So you can see with the help of Docker container run, 
we started a new container of the nginx but with the help of docker container exec we have executed some command inside the running container this is the id of my running container right now if i will go to my running container with the same command docker container exec i can go to my running container but instead of touch and file name i can enter bash so it will open up the bash of my running container right hit enter so you are inside your running container you can see user is root and this is your running container id over here i will go to temp right and inside the temp if i will again execute ls you can see a new directory ensure is present over here so with this command with the exec command we have created a directory inside the running container right but this thing is not possible with the run command right run command is just use to start something execute something and then exit out now we have seen how we can go to inside the running containers where create something and verify something now we are going to start a ubuntu container with the help of docker run command and we will execute some commands inside my running container right for this i will enter command docker container run hyphen it then the image name right then bash hit enter so what it will do it will download the ubuntu distro on your machine right and it is started a container with this particular id and right now you are already inside the running container right if you will execute a command ls hyphen a then you can see you are inside the docker environment bin boot dev these directories are present inside this particular ubuntu distro right if you want to execute a command curl www.facebook.com hit enter and it will say bash curl command not found this why we are getting this particular error so we are getting this particular error because the ubuntu image which is available on the docker central repository is small than the iso image of linux or ubuntu the iso image of linux and ubuntu have a lot of packages a lot of functionality inbuilt in it right but the image which is available on the docker central repository is very basic image so first i need to install everything what i want to use so first i will update my apt get packages i will execute a command apt get update and it will update your package system it's done now i will install the curl i will execute command apt get install curl and it will install the curl utility on your ubuntu container now i will clear out my console now if i will execute curl https colon slash slash www.facebook.com then you can see a complete html web page of facebook is being downloaded you can see the html is nl id is facebook and here is the node.js class and everything which is reside inside the facebook web page is being present on your console right if you will replace the facebook with some other website like google then you can see you will get the google web page right see you executed the same command for the google now you are getting the google web page right this is the google web page html structure so this is the way how you can go inside the containers how you can basically start a new container and open the terminal in that container and how you can execute some commands inside the containers right right now right now i'm inside my container you can see over here i'm not getting my local directory name i'm inside my ubuntu container and inside my ubuntu container i'm executing these commands the facebook and google curl commands right so you can execute anything inside the container either it's a running container or you are starting a new container right if you will exit and you will insert a command docker container ls hyphen a so you can see the ubuntu container right it is being exited just 12 second ago hello team welcome back and today we are going to discuss about the networking in docker so let's start with 
So we are going to discuss about the networking concepts in the Docker. We will see how the containers will communicate to each other. What is the requirement that container can have to communicate with the other container? So Docker container and the services can be connected with each other. Right. So for example, we can see when we are running two containers on a same Docker machine within the same network, like we are running PHP container and we are running MySQL container and for my web application, the PHP container must communicate with MySQL container. So in that case, they both should be connected over the same network. They both, they both should be able to communicate with each other over some ports, right? So Docker container and services can be connected to each other. Container and services don't need to be aware where they are deployed. It means we are using two Docker machines. One is hosted on Windows and another is hosted on Linux. Then the containers don't need to bother where the hosting machine is working. They just need to know about the networking layer or the bridge what they need to use. And it means the containers and the Docker services don't need to be aware where the Docker is basically hosted. It may be possible one of your Docker is hosted on a Windows machine and another is hosted on a Linux machine and you are executing two containers, one on Windows and another on the Linux. In that case, the both of the containers must know about the bridge, about the network, what they need to use. They don't need to bother about the hosted system. Containers and services can communicate whether your Docker host run on Linux, Windows or mix of two. So we have already discussed about it. The only thing which is required to establish a connection or establish a communication between two containers is a network bridge. And all the communication which is possible between the Docker containers is possible because of the default drivers inside the Docker, right? So we will discuss what is the default driver inside the Docker and what is the application of this driver. In a Docker, each container connect to a virtual private network and that network is called bridge, right? So in Docker, bridge is a default network driver of the Docker. In a real time or in terms of networking, a bridge network is a link layer device which forward traffic between network segments. A bridge can be hardware device or a software device running on a host machine, right? But in terms of Docker, a bridge network uses software bridge which allows containers to connect to same bridge network to communicate while providing isolation from the containers which are not connected to that bridge network. The Docker bridge driver automatically install rule on the host machine so that containers on different bridge networks cannot communicate directly to each other. So basically with the help of the bridge network, we are getting a communication medium plus we are also getting some kind of network security. So the containers which are on the same bridge can communicate to each other but in the same way bridge will also take care that the container which are on the other bridge can't communicate to the containers which are running on my bridge. All containers on a same bridge can communicate to each other without port, right? If we are running two or three or n containers on a same bridge, then we don't need to mention about the port in the command. They can, the containers can be communicated to each other without any port. Now we will talk about the best practices to create the networks, right? So suppose we have a two application, application A and application B. Application A is a combination of PHP and MySQL. So we can create a separate network bridge. We can call it SQL, PHP and WT. This is a custom name. You can use anything, right? So all we need to concern is about a separate network bridge. So for this application A, we can create a separate network bridge and only MySQL and PHP containers will be allowed on that particular bridge to communicate each other. For my application B, which is running on Mongo and PHP, then I can create another network layer or another network bridge, call it Mongo and WT, and I will make sure that that PHP container which is running on that particular network can communicate to Mongo only. So over here, we are providing the security to my containers. Over here, we are defining the rules, we are defining the policies, how the containers will communicate to each other and which container will communicate to which container. Right. Docker networks, or you can say the network in Docker is easily plugged in in the containers. We can say user is allowed to create multiple virtual private network bridge in a Docker. In the same way, you can create multiple rules for a single network. 
so network is basically very extensive and very portable service in in a docker right you can use multiple virtual private network you can use multiple bridges you can create multiple networks and for a single network you can create multiple rules it may possible that you can attach multiple containers to a single network also it may also possible you can attach a single container to more than one network or you don't need to attach any network to the container in that case it will auto assign the bridge network to that particular container right i hope now you get some idea how the networks are working inside the docker and, and how the containers are communicating to each other in the future lectures we will dive deep inside the networking concepts we will learn about the private network public network virtual networks we will create our own networks we will create the containers which will use the same host machine and multiple networks and we will create a complete swarm cluster right Hello team welcome back and today we are going to discuss about the networks in container so we'll see how container will use the networks how container will talk to bridge and how bridge talk to the host machine right so let's start with so very first we will start a container to allow traffic from a port on a host machine right for this we will execute a command docker container run hyphen p then we will define the host port and the docker port after this we will start it in a detached mode right then we will find out the traffic and protocol so we will find out which port is allowed to send a traffic on a container which port is allowed to receive the traffic inside the container and which protocol we will use after this we will find out the container ip with the help of command docker inspect right so to execute all the commands let's go to the terminal so here is the command docker container run hyphen p port 8080 colon 80 hyphen d then the image name so first port 8080 is a port which will open on a host machine right and the second port 80 is a port which will open on the container so we will start this container so you can see container is being started and id is f45175 right now i need to find out the ip of my local machine right for this i will execute command if config eth0 hit enter and here is the ip of my machine which is 1781282452521 i copy this ip go to my browser paste it over here put colon and paste port 8080 why i am putting port 8080 because i opened port 8080 on my host machine so let's see what we will have so we can see on port 8080 we are able to open the nginx web page right so this is the same nginx we are running inside our container in a terminal right here right now we need to find out which port is receiving the traffic inside the container and which port is sending the traffic to a container for this first i need the container id and i will execute a command docker container ps and you can see two containers are running right and the latest container which is started 2 minutes before is this so this is the ip of that particular container so right now to find out the traffic and the port on a container i need to execute a command docker port then i need to define the container id so i copy this id and paste it over here hit enter and you can see inside the container it is running on port 80 and accepting the traffic over the tcp protocol and it is accepting the traffic from anywhere because the port is 0.0.0.0 and port 8080 so over the internet you can call it on port 8080 over the tcp network layer right now suppose you want to verify the ip of your container for this you need to execute a command docker container inspect and paste your container id right so we are going to execute a command docker container inspect docker container inspect and the container id hit enter and you will get a very lengthy json over here we need to find out the node called network setting so here is the network setting node right and over here you will get the ip address of your machine and here is the ip address right which is 172.17.0.3 which is different from my local machine ip right 
if you want to format out this command you can execute a command docker container inspect dash dash help right so over here we have hyphen f option to format so i will display the inspect json in a specific format right for this i need to find out my container id so, so here is my container id now i will execute a command docker container inspect hyphen f then put colon then put braces like this over here i need to put dot to access my json object and over here i will put network settings dot ip address after this i need to provide the id of my container hit enter and you can see it will return you the port of your docker container so this is the port on which my docker container is running so docker container is running on a port 172.17.0.3 and ip config eth0 this is the port of my local machine so you can see the port of my local machine and port on the container is different so it visible that container is not using my local network container have its own virtual private network which we have discussed in the previous lecture and the default network is called bridge right now we will understand it with the help of a slide that how the all things are working over here now we are going to understand the networking how the networking is working inside the docker so here is the outer world this is the internet and from the outer world or the internet you are receiving traffic on your machine so this pillar is your machine but inside your machine you have a local firewall which is accepting or rejecting the traffic from the internet right because if that firewall is not working then definitely your machine can be accessible from anywhere so in your machine you have some kind of rules some kind of regulations that who can access your network who can access your machine and who can't access your machine right so here is the outer world right and here is the machine and inside the machine a firewall is working now here we have a bridge right on a machine docker is running and docker is using its own network which is called bridge this bridge is basically communicating to your local host machine right because docker is running on your machine and they are containers like container 1 and container 2 they containers are talking to each other with the help of a bridge so you can see right now container 1 and container 2 which is running inside the docker they are not communicating with the help of your host machine they have their own virtual private network called bridge and they are communicating to each other with the help of this particular virtual private network which we are calling bridge right now suppose in a last lecture we have seen that my machine my local host machine was communicating to my container on port 8080 the communication between the two containers are without any port so if you are using the same virtual private network within the two containers then to communicate with each other they don't need any port and the ip of each container should be different but if your container is talking to your local machine or the host machine then they need some ports a port which will open up at your local host machine which will accept or send the traffic and a port which will open up inside the container so inside my local host machine i am sending the traffic on port 8080 which will be received inside my container 2 or the nginx container on port 80 and that communication is with the help of the bridge so first container is connected to the bridge bridge is connected to your local host machine in the same way when you are hitting this particular request when you are hitting this particular request on your port on your local port you are hitting port 8080 so first it is connecting to your docker virtual private network and then virtual private network sending the traffic to your container on port 80 so that you are getting this particular web page so i hope right now the concept of networking and how the containers are communicating to your host machine and how the containers are communicating to each other is pretty much clear to you right now suppose we can create n number of virtual private networks inside a docker so we will create another 
virtual private network and call it MySQL PHP network, right? And right now I have two another containers, MySQL container and PHP container. So they container can communicate to each other with the help of this particular private network, right? With the help of this particular MySQL private network. But if MySQL needs to communicate with my local host on any port, then they need to communicate over a specific port, right? So port required to open the connection between the host and the container. But if two containers are running inside the same network, inside the same virtual private network, then they don't need any kind of port to communicate with each other, right? So this is the concept of networking inside the Docker and your local host machine. Now we can see we are able to access the NGNX on port 8080. If you will refresh this page, then we will get the same thing. Now I will go to my terminal and stop my container, right? So for this, I will execute command docker container stop and my container ID. So I will copy this ID and paste it over here, right? So this container is stopped. Now if I will again go to my browser and refresh my web page, then you can see you are getting the error. So you are not able to connect it or communicate it to the containers because container is being stopped. If I again start that container with the help of command docker container start and then the container ID. Right, it's been started again. Go to my browser and refresh this web page. So it will again display me the web page, right? So it is being able to communicate with the nginx. So this is how the networking, how the containers and how the virtual private network inside the container are working and communicating to the host machine and communicating to another containers. I hope you like the video. Thank you guys. Thanks for your time. Hello team, welcome back and today we are going to discuss about the docker network command line management. So we will see how we can manage our docker networks from a command line or from CLI. So first we will see how we can list out all the networks which are running on my host machine. So with the command docker network ls you can list out all the networks which are running on your host machine. So basically the command docker network ls will list all the networks the engine daemon knows about. So on your host machine, your host machine engine knows about all the networks will be list out with the command docker network ls. And docker network ls command will come with some kind of optional configuration as well. So if you want to prefer something, suppose you want to filter out the networks which all are the bridge networks, then you can use the docker network filter. And for that you can execute a command docker network hyphen f for the filter and it will define the key value pair. So key is the driver, right? And the value is the bridge. Also, you can filter out the networks on the base of the name, on the base of the scope, on the base of the ID, right? So you just need to provide the key value pair, right? So docker network filter command will work on a key value pair. You need to define the key and value about which you want to apply the filter. To find all the networks, IDs and drivers, you can use the command like docker network ls format and then you can provide a simple JSON format, right? It is again JSON object and JSON value, right? So let's see how we can perform these commands on a terminal and what will be the output of these commands. So I am on my terminal. First, I want to list out all the networks which are running on my host machine. For this, I will execute command docker network ls. Hit enter. And you can see three networks are running on my host machine. One is a bridge network, another is a host and third one is a null, right? So this is the command from which we can list out all the networks which are running on a machine. Over here, we are getting the network ID. We are getting the network name, the driver and the scope. So you can see the scope of all the networks are local. These three are the networks which will be initiated and created by the Docker engine itself. It all depends on the version of Docker which you are using. If you are using the latest version, then you will get most probably three networks. Maybe in future you will get most probably four, five or two or one, right? So it all depends on the version of the Docker you are using that how many networks will be list out by default.
Now suppose you want to get some help on docker network command. So you can execute command docker network dash dash help. Hit enter and it will show you the command is docker network right and over here the commands you can provide and commands are connect, create, disconnect, inspect, ls, prune and rm. So we will see all these commands. First we'll talk about the ls. Now suppose you want to list out or you want to filter out all the networks which have the driver as a host or as a bridge or as a null. For this you can execute a command docker network ls. Then you need to use option command hyphen f which is for the filter and you need to define the key and value. So key is driver and value is bridge. So by this command I'm expecting I will get a list of all the networks on my host machine which have the driver bridge. Hit enter and you can see it's working. The network ID 7374, the name is bridge, have the ID bridge. So it will list out or filter out all the networks which have the driver bridge, right? Now suppose you want to find out all the network IDs and drivers which is running on your Docker host machine. For this, you can execute a command docker network ls, then use dash dash format to format the output and this will return you the data in format of JSON. So we need to filter out the values. So for that, I will provide the argument as a double quote, then open the curly braces, close these curly braces, press colon, space, open double curly braces, close these curly braces. And over here, first I need to read the object of ID, right? And over here in a value, I need to read the object of driver, right? Hit enter. And you can see it is printing all the network IDs with their drivers, right? So you can see. So this is the way how you can work with Docker network ls command, right? So we have seen the functional use of all these commands. Now we will discuss about the next command docker inspect. So we learn about the docker network inspect. So docker network inspect will return the information about one or more network. By default this command will render all the results in a JSON object, right? So let's start and inspect any element, right? So suppose I will go to my terminal and execute a command docker network inspect and I need to provide the ID of the network which I want to inspect. So I'm going to inspect this bridge network. So I copy this and paste the ID over here. Hit enter and you can see it will return you a complete JSON format, right? And it is saying the name is bridge. ID is this created at this particular time. The driver which is using is a bridge, right? And we are getting another information as well, like the containers which are using this particular driver. So right now, Two containers are using this particular driver network. The first Docker container which is using this network is inspiring Shockle, right? And the second is quiz call Goodall, right? So these two containers are using this particular driver, right? And you can see it is also providing the subnet IPs. So one is using this particular driver on 172.17.0.3 subnet and another one is using on subnet 02, right? So that's all about the container network list and container network inspect. Right? In the coming lecture, we will discuss few other commands of Docker container network, right? So thank you guys. Thanks for your time. Hello team, welcome back and we will continue with our previous lecture docker network command line management. Today we will discuss how we can create a new network and how we will connect a container with the network, right? So to create a new network on a host machine, you can use the command docker network create and then provide your network name, right? Once you will execute the above command, basically it will create a default bridge network. Right. So by default bridge network is assigned to all the containers and when you are not defining that which kind of network or the driver you want to use then by default any network which you will create on a docker host machine it will be created and assigned to the driver which is called bridge. Right. 
and we have discussed about the bridge in the previous lectures. Now suppose we want to create a bridge network then it will be created by default command docker network create hyphen d for the detach mode then bridge which is the driver then your network name right. So let's see how we can create a network. So right now I am on my terminal and I will execute a command docker network ls. So we can see the three networks are running on my machine. Now I will create a new network and I will execute a command docker network create and I name it my network. You can see the ID is being returned. I will again execute a command docker network ls hit enter. Now you can see a new network is being added in your network list and by default the network driver is bridge. So when we are not defining any specific driver or any third party driver to my network then docker create a network of bridge type. Right? Now suppose if you want to inspect your newly created network then you can execute a command docker network inspect and either your network name or ID. So I will going to provide my network this was my network name hit enter. So you can see this is the network. This is the ID the creation time the driver type and other details right. So this is the detail of network which you just created right. Now we will see how we can connect a container with a network. So we can connect a container with a network with the help of command docker network connect. Then we need to define the network name and my container name. Right. So docker network will basically work in a same concept on which our local networks work like you can plug new device, you can unplug the device, you can switch the network on the device. So we can create a new network and assign that network to already running container. A single container can belongs to two network, a single network can belongs to multiple containers, right? So we can connect any container by name or by ID with particular network. After connection the container can communicate with other containers in the same network. So we, so we have already discussed about it. The two containers or n container which are belongs to same network they can communicate to each other without any port right. So we have already discussed about these concepts in a networking right. Now we will see how we can connect a new container on a new network. Now I am on my terminal and first I want to list out all the containers running on my host. For this I will execute a command docker container ls and we can see two container are running on my host machine. Now we will see the networks are running on my host machine by command docker network ls and I have four networks are running on my host machine and the third one my network is a default network which I just created before. Right? So what I will do I will create a new nginx container and attach this particular network my network to that particular container and then again inspect my network right so that we can see the container is attached to my network or not. For this I will execute command docker container run then hyphen d for the detach mode. I need to define the name of my application and I will define it my nginx then dash dash network. I need to define my network name and my network name is my network. Then the image name which I want to start right hit enter and container is being started. I again execute a command docker container ls and you can see the and you can see a new container named my nginx is running right. Now I will inspect my network again. Docker network inspect then your network name hit enter and see a new container is being added right. The container ID is this and container name is my nginx. So a new container is started and joined my network which I just created right. If I will go and inspect my nginx container then let's see what will happen. So clear out the console and execute docker container inspect my underscore nginx hit enter. So you can see in the networks it is using my network right and this is the network ID this is the endpoint and this is the gateway. 
Now we will connect a already running container to my existing network. For this, first clear out your console. Find out the number of containers running over here, docker container ls. So we can see two other containers inspiring Shockle and quiz called Goodall is running on my host machine. And obviously I didn't define any network to these containers. So they may be working on default container. And obviously I didn't define any specific network to these containers so that they are already working on a default network, which is bridge. So I will inspect any of them by Docker container inspect. Now I will define the name. Hit enter. So you can see the network is bridge, right? So this is working on a bridge network. I will clear out my console. Now I will use the connect command to connect already running container on a new network, right? For this, I will execute command docker network connect. Then I need to define my network name and my network is my network and my container name, which is quiz call. Good all. So here I'm defining docker network connect. Then I'm defining my network first, then my container as a second argument. Hit enter. It's done. Now I will again inspect my network. Docker network. Inspect. My network. Hit enter. And you can see two containers are joined my network, right? The first one is my nginx, which I started on a new network and second is to is called good all, right? So this is the way how you can connect a container to any network, right? Clear out your console. Now, if I will inspect that particular container, let's see what we will have. So Docker container inspect. Then you need to define your container name or ID. Hit enter. And over here you can see this container is basically connected with two networks. The first network is bridge. The first network is bridge, which is listed over here. And second network is my network, which are just attached to this container. Now suppose you want to disconnect your container with the default network, right? For this, you need to execute a command docker network disconnect. Then you need to define the network name. So I want to disconnect my container with the default network. The name is bridge. And you need to define your container name. My container name is quiz call good all right. Hit enter and it's done. Now I will again go to my container inspect. Then I will see my container should be disconnected with the default network. So docker inspect. So docker container inspect. Then you need to define your container name. Hit enter. And you can see inside the network, you are getting only one network which is attached to this particular container, right? Now you can also try and you can see if you generally disconnect all the networks from any container, right? So suppose I want to disconnect my container with all the networks. So for this, I will clear out my console and I will again execute the same command. But, but over here, I will change my network name. So I want to disconnect my quiz call with my network, which is my network. Hit enter and it's done. Now, if I will again inspect my container, then let's see what we will have. So you can see inside the network setting, you are not getting anything. This container quiz call all is not connected with any network, right? This is not connected with any network right now. If you want to communicate with this particular container, then you would not be able to communicate with this particular container, right? So using the same way we can use the network in our local machine, in our local hosting systems, you can use the network in the same way inside the Docker and containers, right? So this that's all about the Docker container CLI. In the new lecture, we will discuss about the DNS. So thank you guys. Thanks for your time. Hello team, welcome back. And today we are going to discuss about Docker network DNS. 
So we will see how Docker container communicate to each other. So before we move further, let's try to understand what is DNS. So DNS stands for domain name system, right? DNS is something which will be translated into IPs, right? So DNS is how domain name are translated into IP addresses. So suppose for example, you are running a website like you are running facebook.com. Then facebook.com is a domain name which finally land on some kind of server and that server has the IP. So DNS is allow you to translate your request into the IPs. DNS which allowed you to access your servers with the help of web browser with a unique name, right? So every server has the IP, but the same server has the host name and that host name, which we can access with the help of the browser, with the help of any tools like a WinSCP, like Putty, through which you can connect to that server is called DNS, right? DNS makes it possible for us to use remember domain name in place of complex IP addresses. So, so for example, you are running a website and your website domain name is something like testdomain.com and you want to publish your website over the internet. Then to remember the complex number like 189.179.11.21, it is easy to remember the name, right? It is easy to remember the name instead of a series of number. So DNS make it possible for us easy to remember the domain names instead of the IP addresses because it's not possible that you can remember the IP address of each site, but it may be possible you may recognize this site or you may remember about this site with the help of specific domain names, right? Now let's discuss how container communicate to each other with the help of DNS. So containers use DNS to communicate and what is the DNS for the containers? So the container name is used as a DNS, right? Containers don't use IP address to communicate. So we will try to understand why container use their name as a DNS why they don't use the IP address to communicate for this first go to the terminal. So I am here on my terminal, right? So we need to find out how many containers are running over here for this. I will execute a command docker container ls hit enter. And you can see only one container name is inspiring shockley is running on my machine, right? Now we need to find out how many networks are running on my machine. So I will execute a command docker network ls. So we can see the four networks are running on my machine and this is the third network is the network which I just created in the previous lecture. So I am going to inspect this particular network for this. I will execute a command docker network inspect and then the network name. hit enter and you can see no container is basically attached to this particular network, right? This network is not attached with any container. Now what we will do, we will create two new containers, right? So first clear out the console. Now let's start two new containers. So first we will start our first container with the, with the help of command docker container run. hyphen D for the detach mode. Then I need to define the name of my container and I define it. My nginx one. I define the network. And in the network, I define my network, right? Which I just created before. Now I need to define the image name. So I'm going to define the image name nginx colon alpine. So over here you can see I am going to download the new image of nginx which is alpine. Why I am doing this? I will explain it later. Hit enter. So first it will download the image then start the container docker container ls. The two new containers are running right my nginx one. Now in the same way, I need to start another container my nginx2. So I will execute the same command. Just replace the name of my container 
with my nginx2 and I will create nginx alpine container. Hit enter. So another container is being started. Run the command docker container ls. Hit enter and you can see three containers are running and two containers are nginx alpine image and one container is nginx latest image right now we will again go and inspect our network with the help of command docker network inspect then network name and you can see two containers are running over here first container name is my nginx1 second container name is my nginx2 over here i have the ip 172.18.0.2 172.18.0.3 right let's clear out the console and i will try to ping my second container from my first container right for this i will execute a command docker container exec hyphen it for the interactive mode right define your first container name so i'm going to define my nginx1 so what i'm trying to do i'm trying to execute a command on my first container and what is the command ping my second container right so i'm going to execute a command on a first container and what is the command ping my second container just hit enter and you can see I am successfully able to ping my second container and IP is being resolved 172.18.03. So you can see the con so you can see the containers can communicate to each other with the help of the names. Cute. So I tried to execute a command on my first container and I execute a command of ping on my second container by the container name and it's successfully done. Right? So containers are using their name as a DNS to communicate with each other. If I will do the same thing in a opposite manner, suppose I want to ping my container one from my container two, hit enter, then see it is able to resolve all the calls, right? Now I am able to communicate with my container one from my container two with the help of my container name. This proves that container use their name as a DNS to communicate, right? Now question comes, why we are not using IPs? Why container is not using IPs? Because IPs are a static in container, right? IPs is a static value in a container. When you basically stop this container and again start a new container, then it may possible the same IP will address to a new container. In that case, your call may be redirected to wrong container. So we can see this example as well. For this, let's start any of the container. So I will execute a command docker container stop and I will stop my first container, my nginx1. And we can see my nginx1 IP is 172.18.02, right? I stop it. And I again start a new container, my nginx3 on a same network. For this, I will execute the same command container run hyphen d name my nginx3 network would be the same my network and nginx alpine hit enter now it may be possible or may not be possible that the same container can obtain the same ip it may be possible that this container may obtain the ip4 but but we are just playing with an hit and try i will inspect my network again so docker network inspect my network hit enter and that's true you can see the new container which i just started is assigned to the same ip on which the container one was working right in that case if i don't know that container is stopped and i will communicate with the help of the ips then i'm supposed to send the call on container one but the same call is sending to the container three because so to resolve this problem docker use container names right docker use container name as a dns right let's clear out the console 
and if you will again start the container the container one docker container start my nginx1 right and you will again go and inspect your network then you can see a new ip address is being assigned to your container 1 right by this we can say if docker use the ip address to communicate then it may be possible that call may redirect it to that call may redirect to the wrong container right so to resolve this issue docker docker use dns as a container name instead of the container ip right so this is the way how docker use dns and how docker communicate with each others with the help of docker name right so thank you guys thanks for your time i hope you like the video